Fun. Welcome to Zero Page Homebrew, your best source for the newest Atari games. And tonight we have a very special show mm -hmm. because we have two new Atari games, specifically for the 8-bit system. And to help premiere them, we're also going to be interviewing three old school programmers who have brought back their games risen from the dead <laughs> and reprogrammed them for the modern era of Atari 8-bit gaming. Uh, they did them in basic back in the 80s as kids. And now they return to the 2020s and have reprogrammed them in assembly. Uh, they're Eric Antwitz, Robert Antwitz, and John Weisgerber. But uh, first, I want to thank everybody who uh, supports the show, who is listed down the side there. All our Twitch subscribers, Al Nefer, Arena Foot, Armscar Coder, Atari 800 XL Rules, Atari Age, BR Pocock, Buck Owens, Cafe Man 2D, Charles and Check, Charles Wheel and Five Five, Dino Dan, if you see Daryl 1970, Dr. Moo Cows, Great Defender, Johnny WC1, your editor, Carl G. Croco, Mark Space Inc., Mendel Atari, Mick Muse, Mike Soul, Mike Letown, Miss Command, Mem K. Smith, Mr. Zarnoop, Mr. Fix, Mighty Funster, Nathan Strum, Neo Media, Packer, VG Coog, 2600 RC70, Rendered Ghost, Repentless, VG, Ricardo, Ricardo Pim, Six Sweets, Mitty B. Socrates, Spiceware, S. Ramirez, The Lost Cartridge, The Welsh Mid 89, Tiki Dan K, Teat Foes, Trek MD, and X Can X. And if you want to subscribe, just hit the subscribe button and you'll get your name on the list too. Um, or you can just follow. And you'll be alerted to awesome special episodes like this live on Twitch. And I want to thank everybody who's tuned in into the chat. Um, get your questions ready for our uh, special guests. Arena Foot, Il Seabass, Nostalgic, Danny VC, Andy Cat, Rendered Ghost, Vitoko, Alnifer, Ground Trooper, Armscar Coder, Dr. Moo Cows, Somebody named R. Anschwitz. I don't know who that is. Uh, Vitoko and everybody else who is lurking. Um, so I'm just going to skip any poll questions, mail and news and all of that mm -hmm. and get right, right to our guests like I introduced them in the top of the show. They made these games uh, originally back in the 80s as teenagers and now they have yeah. brought them back, <laughs> uh, reprogrammed them, and are releasing them throughout 2021 uh, for your enjoyment and your playing pleasure. Um, I'd like to uh, welcome to the show Eric Anschwitz, Robert Anschwitz, and John Weisgerber. Welcome to the show, guys. How are you doing? Doing great. Good. Great. Thank Hello. You. Thanks for having us. Excellent. How are you guys? Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Good. Oh, we're doing really good. <laughs> you guys are two cats. <laughs> two cats on the floor uh, joining us. You yeah. might have seen them crawling around yeah, yeah. before the show started. <laughs> My cats are sequestered. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're all they're calm right now. Um, yeah, thank you for for coming on the show and and it was really it's a really interesting project that you're doing, uh, if I can call it a project, <laughs> um, because you're taking your old games that you made in the '80s as teenagers that you made in basic for the Atari and now have redone them in assembly and are re-releasing them and and discussing and talking about them in your process so I wanted to get you on the show because it, I thought it was a really really fascinating um, topic um, because a lot of our um, listeners and watchers are programmers themselves or are interested in programming as well um, so let's start it off with how did you guys meet? I, I know two of you Eric, met. Eric and I met in the <laughs> womb. probably lived in the same house. We, we met in the womb. Uh, I, I came out four minutes earlier than him. Oh, wow. Oh, twins. Yeah, okay. identical twins. And then um, we met John Weisgerber in first grade, I believe. So yeah, we were about we six, grade, the... six years old. <laughs> same grade school. Wow. So really early. So they were, yeah. what are you guys, about three blocks from my house. Yeah. So we, we hung out together before we knew anything about Atari or really <laughs> video games for quite a while. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so how, let's go to that then. How did you get into Atari and then into Atari programming? Yeah. These guys really got one and brought me into it. So, so, so it was cri okay, so Christmas of 1981. We begged our parents to give us an Atari 400, which at that time was 
probably four or five hundred dollars and a cassette wow. tape player, the 410 cassette to go with it. So we had no um, printer. We had no disk drive. And most of these games originally were developed with that you know, membrane keyboard and a, a cassette recorder that was totally unreliable. And half the time we'd come back the next day without anything. But, but it was Christmas of 1981. <laughs> And um, we had had a previous video game system and we all had, um, we had the Atari video pinball and, and um, Eric and I had actually the Fairchild Channel F instead of 2600. Oh. Um, but, but we loved video games and we loved arcade games. And when we saw the creative computing ads that showed that you could have Missile Command on your Atari 400, we just had to have it. <laughs> and so tell me just a little bit before we get into like submitting your games to magazines. Did you did you buy a lot of magazines and type in games from from those magazines? Yes. Um, yes. Is that kind of how it started? Right. Yeah. It was a collaborative effort for us. Yeah. So Antic, Analog, and um, Compute. We got every issue of every one of those three. <laughs> And then when we saw an interesting uh, game in a soft side magazine or creative computing, we would get those as well. But, but definitely the three antic analog and, and uh, compute, we got every issue. Yeah. Even, even preceding the time we got our computer, we knew we were going to get it. So we, we, um, we got a couple of issues ahead of time. So the very first day we got our computer, we had our dad type in one of those programs because we didn't know how to type. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think that was my incentive to learn how to type as well, because I typed in all, uh, all those programs from the from the computer magazines as well, because it's like, well, free games. This is yeah. awesome. Yeah. I can type this in and, and the game will come on the screen. I don't have to go to the store and buy it or load it. It's just. Yeah. And I believe your younger sister was the one who had to read out. Uh, yeah. So she would read and he would type. So he got his younger That's, sister. Yeah, yeah, that helps a lot. Especially for the assembly. <laughs> Especially with the yeah, data. Yeah. It does, does help. The data statements for sure, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I, she usually helped me with the assembly uh, versions of games. She would go A, 0, B, 7, <laughs> wow. E, yeah. 3, and I'd be typing it because it's a lot easier for her to read it out and me to type it in. Right. It was very tedious. Yeah, we, we did the in the end. same. Yeah, we traded off those roles. Somebody would be dictating and somebody would yeah. be typing. And I spent a lot of time in their room typing in games with them and playing with that, uh, learning how to program. <laughs> yeah. So uh, just talking about that, how did you divide up? uh the programming to begin with. <laughs> that, that's well, that was a long somebody time was typing, <laughs> somebody was drawing somebody was there, like... there was no real rhyme or reason no <laughs> we we, we yeah. it was really for a lot of the games a truly collaborative approach where the three of us would be sitting there next to one keyboard and trading off on who was typing in something usually one of us would come up with kind of an idea for a game and then all of us would contribute to the programming of it. I remember one specific day where we learned how to redefine characters for the Atari computer to, to allow to have you know, character tile-based um, graphics. In that same day, we, we developed one of the games that's one of the 14 that we released, Ramsey's Revenge. It was the first one that we had figured out how to do that. And we, right. in the beginning of the day, we didn't even know how to do redefine characters by the end of the day we had a working game yeah i i, I think that's how a lot of uh the games are, are developed there's like technology spurs innovation and you're like i can do that yeah with a computer it's like well then i can it opens up this whole possibility these two these yeah. new games that i can make. well a lot of the games were the redefining of the characters that that took up as much as the programming so we had our graph paper and we we had all these you know we didn't have any tools to to help us redefine characters so we were creating monsters and and you know sh fighter jets and everything else and eight, eight by eight squares and that took a long time we probably two of us were working on that and one would be typing in some game logic and and just you know we would run it a million times and then think of another thing to add to it and um but but you know they all you know it was all in spaghetti basic you know go <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's that's to me one of the most amazing things is because i've looked at some of those listings you know recently yeah again 
And, and, you know, we, we weren't very careful. There were like, I think REM statements, maybe in Atari basic take memory or something, because yeah, we were. hardly used any. <laughs> Hard and, <never> used. <laughs> <laughs> and our variables, some decipher, of our variables traditionally were our initials. So you yeah. can't tell. Oh yeah. <laughs> what's I read that. Yeah. Maybe not the best name, but they were short. Right? Yeah, That's yeah. what you were going for. Maybe yeah. you know, shorten it up know. for, for the listings and also for memory. But I think the, that made it, I, you know, I was less involved, well, not involved with converting these to assembly language. But when I look back and see the code these guys had to go through just to understand the code we wrote 30, whatever it was, 35 years ago, <laughs> yeah. 40 years ago. Yeah. Maybe. You had to reverse engineer we your did. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> we, we didn't get to that. But yeah, that, that was a yep. fun part of the conversion. Yeah, but um, so, there was a lot of brainstorming we did. And I, I remember, you know, it was kind of, it could get kind of just like anything where you're really involved in it. There's like an obsession part of it. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. so, you know, you, I would go home and I'd have some idea. I'd draw something on graph paper and, you know, I couldn't wait to show it to these guys, you know, the next yeah. day. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah and, and that's the great thing about collaborations is somebody will come up with an idea and bring it. And then it'll, you know, make some make the whole project better and better and better. Yeah. And our games, our basic games were really tech demos before games even. We we learned how mm. to do some really neat things with basic, like you know, fine scrolling and basic and um flipping um two graphics modes 30 times a second, you know, alternating graphics modes, like we did on one of our, our space assailants, Space Invaders clone. And we, we thought, wow, that is such a neat idea. Nobody's ever done this in basic and that we had seen it. And so we did that and then thought, okay, what game could, could work with that? And, and so right. we, we um, a lot of our games were pushing the envelope of what Atari basic could do at the time, which was kind of half of our enjoyment was exploring what the, the machine could do. Yeah. Well, let's let's get into uh, the first of two games that we're going to have the world premiere for. Like you've released a lot of the games, uh, the re the redos uh, in assembly language, but these haven't been released yet. So the first one we're going to take a look at is Kooky Climber, and uh, you guys can talk about that as we when we boot this up. So let me get that going. Okay, maybe we should start with the, the basic version real quick. John, um, do you want to talk about the, the basic version first? Sure. Uh, of, of Kooky Kook Climber? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think that the big thing for us on that was, you know, having a large amount of memory that you could scroll vertically. And I think we were using techniques like you take one graphics mode that's, you know, uses more memory and you over, overlay it with like a different display list. Does that sound familiar? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's been a long time. <laughs> yeah, so but, the, the, the basic version, <laughs> the, the building looked pretty much the same. The flower pot looked the same. The windows closing looked the same, but the top of the building and the helicopter are, are all new for the, the <laughs> version. Yeah. Plus the man looks a little the, less most of the, so, so real quick, most of the games that we wrote, a lot of the games we could reuse the um, the character sets that we redefined and the um, the screen memory that we had redefined, you know, 35 years ago. But this one, you know, the building's kind of redundant, you, you know, you know, block on block. So Eric wrote this yeah. one primarily, and he he had to rewrite the whole thing pretty much. There wasn't much reusable on this one except for the idea. Yeah, the idea, right. the, the, the girders and the flower pots are about the only thing from the original on this. <laughs> so, but, so, <laughs> so for those that don't know, the original game that we copied this after in 1986 or whenever we wrote this, 84, was Crazy Climber. So we thought we would oh, be yeah. clever and call it Kooky Climber instead of Crazy Climber. And, and <laughs> nobody will ever know. Nobody will ever sue us with that. Yeah, we were worried about the lawsuits, of course. Um, no, but we, we, we called it Kooky Climber with a K. And then we thought of, hey, let's make a series of kooky games. And we came up with this kooky right. and kooky diver. Now, the, the unfortunate thing is we sold this game, the original basic version, to Compute Magazine for $400. It was the first game we ever sold to them. And we were thrilled. We were ecstatic. Um, <laughs> but they never published it. You know, every you know every. <laughs> month we went to the bookstore and bought the copy of the magazine is this the month we're going to be in no 
No. And then after about two years. Yeah, I was going to ask about that. Yeah. It's like you never did, got feedback. they did or didn't tell you whether never, it was going to be published. No. They just no. bought it. <laughs> yeah, they shell, bought it and shelved oh it. And, and um, so that was very disappointing. So this was actually the first kooky game we wrote. But Kooky's Quest was actually bought by Antic Magazine and published. So that was the first published Kooky. And for anyone else, they would think, oh, Kooky's Quest was a single game, you know, with the name Kooky in it. But in reality, yeah. it was because of Kooky Climber that the name Kooky Quest okay. came about. So it started with this one. Yes. So when when you're doing when you were doing the basic programs, uh, how how did it work? Like you said, you only had like from the at the beginning, you only had a tape player yeah. or tape recorder, yeah. tape player, and the computer, no printer, no di no floppy drive. Yeah. So how how would you save them? You would save them to tape, I'm guessing. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> right. It was really unreliable. Yeah. yeah. Right. Save C colon. Pray to pray that this works. Yeah, we saved them to <laughs> multiple tapes just to hope that one of them worked right. If those heads got oh. gummed up a little bit, it, it you lost everything. And there was one racing game that that um, we lost completely <laughs> to, to history. Oh no! But, well, but, actually, Ramsey's Revenge, which is the pyramid game was lost and and for a while these guys were calling it the pyramid game yeah i remember because <laughs> they couldn't remember what it was called <laughs> i recovered that one from a floppy disk only like three or four years ago that was my mistake oh so, wow so about 25 years ago after we had done finished all these 14 games originally i bought one of these sio2 pcs you know like back in yep. 1990 or something and um so i i copied yes that's it <laughs> so, so I copied all of our floppies to um, my PC. So, so then we could, and then yeah. at that time, the X former emulator came out. So, you know, we just started playing our games on the emulators and, and I forgot to copy side B of one of the floppies. So for about, oh, no. for about 20 years, we thought we had lost it. And then it wasn't, it was like four years ago that Eric looked at those floppies again and said, Hey, there's side B on this one. And it's got four of the games that we, we thought we had lost. And like John said, oh, we, wow. we were calling it the pyramid game. We couldn't even think of what we called it. And then <laughs> another game, <laughs> another game was funny, Alien Assault, which was released earlier this year to Atari Age forums. We we could not even load that for 25 years, and we didn't know why. And then Eric looked at it once and said, "Look, you know, we're writing over DOS memory, and we wrote that when we only had a cassette, and we were, you know, careless with the memory, you know." Right. Back then, it was difficult with basic as it was, and um, so so we didn't even know how to what that game looked like. We just had a vague recollection of it. We knew it had parallax scrolling, and that was about it. But Eric <laughs> recovered. Well, actually, I, I I converted it to a wave file and made a cassette version that we could load into the Altera emulator. And I and I think I, I texted my brother and John and said. Look, I know what this game looks like, and I sent him a screenshot. And then Eric actually changed the code <laughs> so it would work with the disk drive. But, but anyway. Oh, nice. Tanya, you're doing a yeah. great job on this one. Oh, <laughs> you <laughs> really are. <laughs> you you got to go to the the eat at expert. Level. I love the gigantic eat at jo Joe's signs. That, yeah, that yeah, just fly down the screen. It's like, oh my god. You, it's hard <laughs> to you avoid those. those. Yeah. yeah that, yes, it is. <laughs> that was one of the. Of improvements over the original basic game. The original basic game did not have either Joe's. It didn't have um, the, all the skyscrapers looked exactly the same width going up. Now I've got the ones where oh, it's there skinny go. <laughs> and then separate into Thanks. two, yeah. kind of like um, the original Crazy Climber. And the man coming out dropping the um, flower pot, the, the man is new. Oh, that's, yeah, so, that's a nice, nice so effect, too. Crossbow was asking if you were playing on the 800XL, and she is. So these are not uh, emulated. Uh, these are uh, loading off the AVG cart onto the 800XL. Yeah, the funny thing is when we redid all these um, games, we have not run them on our, we have the original Atari. As you can see behind me, that's still our collection. Oh, those are yours. Yeah, those, those are ours. ours. Yeah. So, so one of those um, 400s is John's. He, he gave it to yeah. us. Uh, 10, 15 years ago, but we're going to give it back. 
No, he's uh, not, he's not. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I think it was 30 years ago. I no, gave maybe 30. <laughs> yeah. And, and then um, the four, one of those 400s is the one we did most of these games on. And then with some of the earnings from the magazines that we were paid from, we bought the 800XL and the, and the 1050 disk drives. So we did upgrade oh, okay. with some of our earnings. But, but um, yeah, that's our collection right there. But we never... But, oh, very nice. But when we, when we developed these um, games, we really only ran them on the Altera emulator. So we're lucky that a lot of people still oh. have their computers up and running. And we've, oh, yeah. we've just been too lazy to do it ourselves, but um, we're going to do this. <laughs> well, one, on one thing that's yep. coming up, um, hopefully, is that we're going to be yep. releasing um, cartridges through Atari Age. Um, mul oh, that's multi excellent. Um, that's one of my questions. You're yeah. skipping ahead. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We'll get to that's that. punchline. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the next uh, exclusive game that we're going to be playing is Robot Dungeon. Um, so... This one is uh, reminiscent of, a, of another game. Uh, starts with B, uh, Berserk, <laughs> a little yeah. bit. It does have a lot of differences, though. The character uh, from Berserk, similar. but yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and you knew you move from room to room, right. and it and but there's like a start and an exit. Go for it. Right. No. And uh, different objects that you have to collect as well. So there's there's a lot of differences in it that mm. add to it. Quite yeah. Well. Now, this game, I'd like to have John explain the uh, origin of this game for sure. The maze. Oh, part okay, of it. yeah. Well, I, I think it, it uh, the maybe the inspiration for this came from an article in Creative Computing Magazine called uh, Be Amazed. And it was basically an algorithm that showed you how to generate a honeycomb, a, you know, six-sided maze where, where the cells oh. of the maze were six-sided. And, you know, we, we looked at that and kind of talked it over and talked about how we could encode that efficiently. And, uh, you know, the first of all, we were really enthralled with the idea that you could have a randomly generated maze as opposed to a fixed maze and that each gameplay would be unique. So we were really excited about that, you know, and that was actually a big part of the this was released as like a game of the month or something. Yes. Yeah. Antic uh, game of the month. It was, it was in, Antic. Okay. In December of 1985. Right. It was released on disc. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. We, we didn't subscribe to the disc um, version of Antic, so we never got it. <laughs> no. I was wondering why so I don't, don't have, have a copy of that yeah. magazine. I, I don't so have no, that one. None of you have a copy of it. <laughs> oh, I've got no. the magazine. But I don't oh, have the okay, disc. Okay, good, good. Oh, no. Okay, I, I don't even think I have the magazine on that one, but he's going <laughs> to he's gonna go get it. But anyway, um, the other aspect of it was we had this idea that you could have this giant maze, and, and we, yeah. we figured out how to do basically bit fields, you know, to represent the rooms of the maze, you know. So, like, each right. item in the maze was represented by one bit, and maybe the even right. the I think the configuration of the doors might have been represented by one bite or a half of a nibble, maybe. <laughs> I'm not sure. It couldn't yeah. be a nibble. There's six doors. It's but one bit for each door. Yeah, one bit. Yeah. So so but that was like right. the dawning of our realization that you could use just bits inside of bytes to start encode this information. And, and right, so we got excited and we made these, it, what was it? It was 20 by 20 with like 400 room maze. And three <laughs> levels. So it's 1200 total room. <laughs> so and, and a it, lot of room. It was, and it was crazy. We, I don't know what we were thinking. We just, we wanted to max out what we could do in this, have this huge maze, but it was sort of and like I, unplayable <laughs> at that time. Yeah. And I and I think I read that the generation of the mazes uh, in your PDFs it took twenty minutes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And you're like, don't worry, it's doing things. Well, well, we actually had a separate maze generation program that was on that disc of yeah, the that's month. That's right. Yeah. And so the idea was that you ran that first, and it took like twenty minutes to generate the maze, and then you, okay. you would have your data file for the maze for the game and then you would run the game and it would take about a minute to load that data file so you know back then it was kind of you know okay for basic games but <laughs> but not anymore yeah yeah but but the amazing yeah. people were a lot more patient back yeah. then we, but we had a 1200 <laughs> what was it 300 by 400 
maze. I mean, it was huge. Each each level was four hundred rooms, rooms, twenty yeah. by twenty, yeah. and there were yes. three levels. And there were three so levels. Twelve hundred right. total rooms, <laughs> yeah. which no one would have oh. ever finished. <laughs> Crossbow asks um, you uh, if you can. Can you only shoot left and right? No, yeah. you're shooting up and down. Oh no, you can shoot you're diagonals. Shooting. And diagonals. Yes. diagonals yeah. too. The, the and controls are exactly it's, like it's, Berserk. It's, if you press and right. hold the fire button, you can use the joystick to shoot shots in different directions, and you won't oh. move. Uh, oh, and nice. I noticed so if you're surrounded, it's, you can clear it out. It's and even... also, one of the neat improvements is you can press the select button, and it brings up a map of the full maze. That, that's something oh, we didn't yeah. have before. And, and it also is a way oh. to get, get a little pause. There. there we go. So you're you're the nice. blue square. Correct. Yeah, uh, I'm guessing. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Very very nice. So so if you're lost, you can uh, you can find your way. Yeah, it's so really you... helpful if you got a 15 <laughs> by 15 maze um, and this to you can see the whole map. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um. So you've been releasing these games throughout 2021. Um, did you get all the games updated before 2021 and no. wanted to release them slowly? You have been yeah. working on them then throughout this year. Right. Okay. Part of that so statement is correct. So we did re want to release them slowly, but we just started in um, May. We started these in May. No, March. It was March. Yep. And we were done by about July, but we have been slow rolling them. And we've been also making some updates here and there. You can't ever finish anything. So, so we, but we had <laughs> right. most of the 14 games done in that four month period between March and July. Yeah. And so we've been. And, and was that your whole plan was to keep them refined, yeah. uh, confined to one year? Yeah. Yeah. yeah because um, we were, we were on a roll. That, that's one reason. <laughs> You know, when we first started, it took, you know, maybe, you know, three or four weeks for each of these games. And and it basically, you know, Eric did some of them and I did some of them. We we rarely kind of collaborated. This one was primarily his yeah. too. And, um, but we shared a lot of common code though. And, you know, we also made 5,200 versions of these. All these games are in right. 200 versions. But we got on such a roll. We had such a good like framework for development that I wouldn't have wanted to spread it out over a couple of years because we would have probably forgotten how to do things. So yeah. by the end, by the end of it, the you know the 10th, 11th, 12th, and 13th and 14th games only took a week or two. You know, we were like I said, we were really on a roll. And yeah, the intent, so was, the original intent wasn't to do all 14 because some of them right. aren't the best work that we've ever done, even <laughs> on the basic versions, especially a, right. a game that Robert had done. The first game ever was called Phoenix, but it wasn't the full Phoenix game. It was just one of the yeah. screens of the bird flap. But, um, right. but anyway, so we didn't intend to redo some of the games, but at the end... I said I was going to do one of the, the lesser games, and then Robert said, well, I'll just do the other one. And at the end, we just said, well, we'll just do them all. <laughs> yeah. Just do them all. Yeah. Make, make, do the whole set. Right. Yeah. That's exactly so what you, we did. So you, you said that, you mentioned that you were, you are also releasing 5,200 versions of that. What, yeah. what was the reasoning behind doing that? Just because it was easy enough? Or well, you have 5,200? It's, it's not that, okay, so I'll let Eric explain the technical part, side of this, but one of the reasons why we did that is there are thousands of games for the 8-bit and, and on Atari Mania, yeah. etc. And these games would probably just get lost in, in the shuffle. But we, we know that there's <laughs> not that many games on the 5200 and any homebrew game yeah. on the 5200 is going to get some attention. So that was one of the reasons. Yeah. Another reason is the um, Argon um, emulator that um, Mark Space Incorporated has put together and it's available on many platforms. Yeah. Brian Hall, who is the CEO of Mark Space, went to college with us at Eastern Michigan University. And he said that he was going to add a, a driver for the 5200 before they bit. And he said, you know, if you have a, if you could convert these to 5200, we can include these in our, our bundle with the installation uh -huh. of, um, of Argon. So that was an extra incentive to do it. And then from there, Eric tried to ex explore how to do that. And I'll let him kind of figure yeah, out yeah. All that story. Br Brian Hall from Argon's famous last words were, all you got to do is remap the po pokey chip and then it's pretty much done. 
And it turned out to be a lot more than that. There, there are a lot oh, yeah, yeah. more um, nuances to the 5200. But I went to Atari Age, the forum, and I put out just a, a call for help on what to do to convert from a, an 8-bit program to a 5200 program. And a user named Rathchild, who is kind of legendary in the Atari Age forum, forums, actually invited me into a little subgroup where he explained everything. And, and really, I, I could have never oh, done nice. the first conversion without Rathchild's help. He, he was amazing. And um, yeah. so, yeah, this is an example of one of our, our games that we never intended to right. redo. Robert <laughs> redid this pretty much. This, this was literally the last <laughs> of the 14 games we did because I we didn't want to do it. And because, OK, there's two reasons why we didn't want to do it. It's, Number one is that we have this piracy 1621, which already yes. was the improvement to this game. This game was originally called piracy in the basic version. And the, the game is actually not bad. The instructions are very, very complicated, but it was one of the first yeah. basic games we ever wrote. And yeah, um, this was way back, <laughs> way, way back. This is one of the first ones we ever did. And um, it had no redefined characters in the original version, even. It was just at, at ASCII oh, okay. characters. So when yep. when I finally got around to do it, I said, I'm going to just make this exactly what it was. And at the very end, I decided to redefine three characters. But pretty much, it's exactly what it was. But with yeah. some music in the background. So this is not a great example to play here. But but, <laughs> but it, it goes to show that we got compulsive and OCD about it. And we wanted to do all of them. So, <laughs> We finally did this one and, and put this one together as the very last one. Yeah. But I, we released, but again, one of the reasons why we didn't want to do this initially is we've already made an update to it, which was called Piracy 2 in the basic. And we called that one Piracy 1621, which was a pretty neat fine scrolling game in basic, which you could go yeah. horizontally and vertically fine scrolling. And it had three different scenes. You went to an island and um, you fought a pirate ship. And um, that was a pretty good improvement over this version. So when we did, so I initially did the um, the Piracy 2 conversion for the assembly version and wasn't even at that point planning to do this. But again, the very end, Eric did Yahtzee and I did this and we called it a day and we were done. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I just noticed there's a question about the robots in uh, Robot Dungeon. Oh, I can handle it. Oh, go for it. Oh, good, good question. <laughs> do, you, do you see it, Eric? No, are the I... robots character graphics that are replaced by sprites when they actually move? No. That's a great question. No, <laughs> I had originally planned on doing it that way because it, one of our other games that we've released is Sakoban, and it does work that way. Um, the Sakoban mm -hmm. character is two sprites together, and when it moves one of the hay bales around the, the little maze there, that's a character that changes to sprite and is moved, and then it changes back to character. And I was going to use that technique uh, okay. on Robot Dungeon, but I decided to do it a different way. And so when when a robot moves and there's only one that moves at a time, it is literally bit bit shifting to the left or the right or uh, up or down oh. between two different characters. Yeah. It, there's always got to be a blank character that it's moving to, and it's, it's shifting bits from one character to another while it's moving. So that's a great question. Oh, and wow. no, it's all done with... Um, character graphics and no sprites for the, oh, yeah. the robots. That, that is a good question. Yeah. And a very, very uh, innovative way to uh, move, uh, smoothly move a character yeah. from one spot right. to another. Uh, um, so if I, my calculations are correct, and you did release this in 1981, it was one of your first games. Yeah. You were, you were 15 when you made yeah, this game. Yeah, I think that was actually a little bit of an exaggeration. What we wanted to do is, <laughs> when we named all these updates, we we usually ended them with a one because usually you would say, oh, 2021. But when we got to some games like, um, that Night were Rescue. Like, like Night Rescue, I said, that can't be 2021 when this is World War II. So we called that one 1941. <laughs> and then this okay. one was actually written in, I think, 1983. So we were we were 17, okay. I believe, not 15. Okay. But but that this was one of the exaggerated dates. But they all ended <laughs> they all ended a one. And that's what that's why this was yeah. 1981. I, I noticed that trend. Was was that an impetus to release them this year? Yes. Being well, 20, we wrote it was. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Well, Robotron 2084 was written in 1984. They did the same thing at Williams. So we thought if it was good oh, enough yeah. for them, <laughs> it was good enough for us. 
<laughs> Tanya, if you want to okay. do another world premiere and get off this, I don't want to um, drop subscribers here. <laughs> this, this is our worst game. <laughs> play, play, sure. Play another world premiere, which we haven't shown to anybody. All right. Which is the, the yep. Phoenix right. 2021. Which oh, okay. you bet. Don't get your hopes up. It's not exactly Phoenix, but it's an update <laughs> to my. Um, two weeks after we got our Atari, I wrote this at ASCII Phoenix, and we had to do something for these updates. So I, we came up with this one, and this is very similar. It's the Phoenix 2021. This is very similar to Demon Attack more than Phoenix, but um, you know it's basically an original original game. But it's an update to again the very first game we ever wrote. Yeah, it's got shades of Phoenix. It's yeah, Phoenix like. It's like the second <laughs> screen in Phoenix with the bird. Similar to yes, that. the the great. bird the bird animations are similar to Phoenix, but um, but anyway, the the game is not. The game is more like Demon Attack. Um, so let's go back to the the games being published in Antic Magazine Cookies Quest and Overflow. Yeah. Um, okay. So oh oh, you've got the magazine there. I've got my. Yeah, I would, but it's got my stupid hair. <laughs> oh, oh, it's kind of oh, working. <laughs> can, I, can I undo this? Let me see if I can undo my back. Yeah. Um, oh, there you go. You're there. Should work now. Okay. Yeah, this is... Um, this is the very first one, February of 1985. And this one... Very nice. I got to show you the artwork in this one, which is unbelievable. We, Eric, talk while I'm um, listening to the artwork. <laughs> Actually, there's a question. Oh, okay. Um, how question did you mode. How did you decide on the fonts for these games? Did you actually design them? No, we didn't design them. Robert found some library of Atari fonts that you know someone had put together, oh. and and by the time we were doing these games in, in assembly language. We we used a few tools for like graphics editing and things like that, so we were able to look at some of the fonts and just kind of pick picked um, neat ones for each individual game. So almost every one of the fourteen games uses a different font. It was just kind of whatever we oh, we found, but we found them just out there in a, some Atari library of fonts. Oh, that's awesome. There's some kind of prep, um, so preppy like we... fonts in there. I noticed. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's similar. So w when you did submit these games to the magazines, were there was there consideration of size of the games? Was it limited by something the magazine said, or was it limited by memory of the computer? And they just happened to end up, you know, being able to be published on two or three. Pages? That's a good question. Most of the games that were published back then were all fit in. They always said 16k cassette, 24k disc, and so that was always our goal is to make them fit in their 16k. Um, memory because I think that, so everyone could run right the original Atari 400s I think had 8k but I think that only lasted okay. a couple months and by then Atari up to, to 16k and even when we bought our Atari 400 in 1981 or my parents bought it for us the, most people had upgraded the 400 to 48k too so most people had 48k at the time but we always tried to make ours fit with 16k now of course the graphics mode takes up half the, you know you're you're not you're you're not left with very much to program with when you have 16k constraints yeah, but right. the, the 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 magazines never said hey can you cut this down to fit in a, but because we always by design made them 16k no matter what yeah yeah actually um, there's a question for oh, oh go, go ahead i was just gonna say that i remember uh eric and robert may not remember their dad took my atari to get the memory upgraded Oh really? Yeah. I yeah, at a it. place near somewhere near where he worked was yes. where you got he, yours upgraded. So yes. I was really excited. He was willing to take my Atari into the shop and get the memory upgraded to forty eight k. Yeah. Oh nice. Yeah. <laughs> I see somebody ask um, a question about overflow. It, it says, "Was that the one where you're the center pushing back goop in the horizontal pipes?" And that that was us. Yes. You know, John John mostly wrote that one in basic. Um, 100% with some real tricky um, memory moving techniques. And it was the shortest program. Mm. That was probably only like 30 lines of basic, but it turned out to be a pretty long um, assembly translation because we, we, that was 
a lot of people like that game. It was very fun. Um, on the assembly, it's very frantic. It yes, gets, gets hectic. It does. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, John wrote that. Yeah, um, the 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 thing that I did in that was this trick, and I'm pretty sure you guys told me about it, which was using the print statement. You could set up an array of uh, bytes, and you could trick the print statement into printing that to write memory quickly in BASIC. Yeah. So it's kind of like having a little subroutine at your disposal to do a fast write. And I'm quite sure that these guys saw that somewhere and told me about it, and that got me excited. <laughs> Because yeah. suddenly, you know, you could do some quick writes. So, like, if you wanted to write the um, sprite at a, a different Y location, you know, the, the player, then it was much quicker to do that. Because if you had to do it, uh, you know, a byte at a time in basic, it just wouldn't have worked. It would be too too slow, and your event loop would, would be too long. Yeah. So, yeah. Tanya's playing a game right now called Night Rescue. And we this was we thought this was the bee's knees when we wrote this game. Oh yeah, this this is a great and, game. And believe it or not, it, it looked exactly like, like this in basic. basic. <laughs> Other yeah, than this really fine scrolling. It was it this really good. did, yeah. It was this good in basic. Wow. And Compute wow. bought this one for four hundred dollars. And the funny and they never published it. Again, they, they bought That's too bad. They, they bought this right after there were a lot of data statements. And maybe that was one thing that scared them away because it would have been hard to type. And one mistake, that was before they had the, the correction. Um, oh, no, code. before that. It was That's before that. And I, I have a feeling that they were worried about people typing this one in. But it was this good yeah. and basic. And um, this this game, it was funny. When, when um, we were negotiating, they actually allowed you to kind of negotiate prices, or we thought they did. They said, how would $400 oh, wow. sound? And, and we had the audacity as 19-year-olds. 19 John, I think, wrote the letter and said, this game is way better than Cookie Climber. We should get like eight hundred dollars. <laughs> and they said, "Wow!" They said, "No, take it or leave it." And you took it. Oh, <laughs> so, so yeah, uh, not not a real question they posed then. Right. But they were just like, "How does it sound?" Yes. Does it sound like better than zero? Right. <laughs> exactly. Maybe they. they maybe that's why um, they never published them. They were mad at it. So we've got a question from the chat um, that they're noticing music in some of these ones that we're playing now. Right. Um, did you have this music back in? I'm, I'm guessing they no. weren't in the basic versions. No. Um, and some of this music is really, really good. Right. And, and some of it I recognize. Right. Though, yes, as well. I know. <laughs> yeah. We we did we did um, take we used the RMT music player for these assembly um, conversions, but it wasn't that easy either because Eric, for example, had to write the. 5200 version of that, which um, was, oh. was a little complicated, but but yes, th that that RMT library of code came with some sample music that we used in a lot of these games. I actually wrote hand hand entered the theme "Walk Like an Egyptian" in Ramsey's Revenge. I did that one by right. hand, yep. and I did um, the the piracy and the piracy 1621 and 1981 tunes. I I found some old pirate songs on sheet music and typed them in. But all the other ones were from sample. Um, but th we didn't have any music in our basic programs because it was really hard to do music in the background with the loop in basic because you could only basically play right. one note, a loop. And we didn't have timed loops. We just ran it as fast as it right. could. So it was, really hard, <laughs> it was really hard to time out music in basic. We, the only music we ever had was in Ramsey's Revenge. When you reached the top of the pyramid and got the key, we played a little ditty that we uh, um, hand wrote out in basic. But that was the only music yeah. we had in any of the games. In the other games, we just we had sound effects, but we just had oh. um, no either no music or kind of a droning background music that kind of <laughs> was annoying more than it, the it, music. Yeah, if you go back, it's a little annoying. Yeah. But but so nostalgic actually remembers typing in overflow awesome. from the magazine and, awesome. and, he, and he recognizes your name. Awesome, <laughs> that's so. awesome. Well, yeah, that is pretty. Yeah, the, the, well, must be as old as we are. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> right. Yeah, we were about twenty when, when that came out. Yeah. So uh, yeah, the uh, 
I, I see the demographics on YouTube, and I, I know the ages, and it's your spot on. <laughs> Everyone's around the same right, age. Well, here. that's why we're in the retro community. You know, it's right? Like, yeah, retro game. Exactly. But, but I love, I love when younger people get into the retro community. It's, that's the, that's even better than us old guys doing it. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. But so, so Tanya, don't you think if you had a grappling hook, you could just drop down to wrestle <laughs> some of those guys? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Can you yeah, deploy sure. it with these buttons? Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. <laughs> That's what, yeah, see, I, I was, I was when these guys were doing this, I was doing a little bit of playtesting, and I was like marketing. I just kind of came up with a few ideas, but they were rejecting them right and left. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, Tanya, you're almost yeah. at the edge here, um, and there may be a little delay in the, the uh, Twitch feed, but when you get to the far right, you have to push the fire button down and scroll your balloon all the way to the right and land on that landing pad. Oh, because uh, we were playing we this were, yesterday. Push your, yeah. push your we were fire button to down. Out what the landing pad. Push the fire button down, but yeah, don't crash into the landing pad. Land on top of the one. Oh. Which is is this yes. the landing yes. pad yes. here? Yep. Yep. That's yep. it. Oh. Slowly. Yeah, slowly. <laughs> slowly you land. Do it too, yes. too fast to crash. <laughs> you got it. You got it. Just let it drop. Oh, almost. Yeah. Oh, there you go! Yay! Because hey. we're wondering what the landing pad yeah. was. Yeah. We well, when this was one. posted, when when we released this to Atari Age, there, all these games, it's great um, publicity because people YouTube these things, and yeah. several people were like, "Why can't I land?" And uh, we, that, <laughs> yeah. that's a leftover from the basic version when we had a rough scrolling instead of fine scrolling. The only way you could get right. into some crevices was to push that fire button and fine tune your balloon. And then we thought, oh, well, we'll fine tune oh. the balloon at the end. So that was a leftover from the original game. Gotcha. Okay. And you notice there's a, a plane here on the second level. Yeah, it definitely makes things a lot harder. Yeah. <laughs> so so for, the, um, for the games that you sold, like say the, the Compute Magazine that they never published those games, did they prevent you from selling those games to another magazine? Is that why you submitted different games? Um, you know, w no, I don't think, no, we weren't tied to compute at all. In fact, one of the games, like, um, I think it was Cookie's Quest, we have the rejection, we saved all this stuff, so we have a, we have a rejection <laughs> letter from um, Compute on Cookie's Quest, I believe, so then we went to Antic, and then they bought it. And some of them, we got two rejections, and then finally uh, an exception, <laughs> or acceptance. So we, we were yeah. shopping them to all three. Um, we never got anything purchased by Analog. They seem to have a little, maybe too high standard for us. But this game here was our first published game. And um, yeah, th I love the mechanics in it where you get to choose a weapon right. for fighting and different weapons will be more effective right. than others based on how many hit points exactly. the enemy has. Yeah, 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 it's a really interesting mechanic. The, the mechanics were even more complicated in the basic version. And I dum <laughs> dummied the, the rules down a little bit for this version. Oh, okay. The basic version actually had you type on the keyboard, which was our number one goal was to eliminate that because you don't want to do that in the middle no. of the game so you picked a, no, a no. weapon here where you don't throw it but yeah see <laughs> but but anyway the, the neatest part of the of this game was the navigating through the hallways that that the way that looks was mm. was exactly how it looked in the basic version too and we were really proud of it. oh really yeah it, it kind wow. of fine scrolled through well not fine scroll it, it was so fast, so it looked like fine scrolling. But the, the, when, when you were <laughs> yeah. going around the hallways, it looked just like that. It looked just but, like that. Robert, do you have that picture, wow. the artwork from yeah. the magazine? Yeah, that's what you Let me show that again. That was the I, I, thing. I'm trying, I want to get Tanya to compare her experience right. with yeah. the artwork. <laughs> Sometimes marketing um, takes over and they, they overhype a game. Yeah. <laughs> so here's the here's the art they did. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Yeah. Really great. Wow. We always love that double page artwork. Right. It's got our now, I was gonna ask a That's amazing. Yeah. yeah it's good. I was gonna ask a question about the artwork and the print. Okay. All the the text below. Um, how much did you guys send in, and okay. how much did they do? Great, great question. We wrote the whole. We wrote this and more. We we wrote all that. Okay. They 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 yeah. changed a few words here and there on this one, but we wrote we wrote like ten pages 
I, I, I think they were. I think we had my dad type them up much. a little too much. So they could, because you were paid by the page. I think that's that's what it was. <laughs> seriously, seriously, uh, you were paid oh, by the page. So we tried to stretch it out. Yeah. yeah. And um, so the longer the program, the more you got paid. And then um, ah. but, so but we wrote a lot of that, and they. I don't know if all authors did that or not, but we did. And now the one that they changed a lot was the overflow. They changed that one completely. We didn't like how they did that. One. And here's the page with yeah. the basic listing. Yeah, you um, won't be able to right. See that. And that has the error correction uh, codes beside it. Yes. This one had error corrections yeah. on this one. Yes. Yeah. So much better. Except when they made a mistake on the error correction or the thing you had to type yeah, in. Yeah, right. And then you're like, well, I have to yeah. wait a month or two for the correction. Yeah. There's, so there's a ton of data statements in this one. Is that? Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Those are the worst to type so in. We had a lot of redefined yeah. characters and. Uh, on this one completely but but yeah that's a good question though that mostly we we wrote our own um and we it was a combination of the backstory of the program we kind of wrote a real creative backstory on the, all these games and then we wrote a technical part and and these magazines typically well antic was the only one that published them they took out a lot of the technical part they they just had the um they they summarize the technical part real sh small but we we, we really wanted to teach people. That was a goal of ours is to teach people how we did yeah. these things. And they left all that out of these games. I, I was going to mention, I guess because you go ahead. I was just going to mention about that artwork that, you know, the, the miracle of the internet. Um, I looked up, there was a woman, Kyle Bogertman, who did that artwork. <laughs> and she was actually oh. somebody who went to Mindscape. And her husband was named, uh, I think it was Wes Jenkins. And they had something to do with creating lego island so you know to me that's like a oh, little really? brush with fame oh, that yeah, she wow. did the art <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> really really slight brush so but we say that we collaborated with <laughs> yeah we collaborated with an artist right exactly <laughs> whose husband <laughs> <laughs> well no i think she was yeah. involved in all that actually oh she was too yeah, yeah. so so you said that you wanted to teach people with your programs i guess that's a continuation of you guys learning yeah. from typing yeah. in games yeah. is is that part of how you learned how to oh totally we didn't we didn't have classes we did this in high school before we had computer classes in school so we totally learned yeah. through magazines that is a, and all three of us went into computer programming as professions so the, i mean that atari 400 really created our careers i mean no, no doubt about it and it was yeah. very collaborative back then. Everyone shared everything. You know, everyone discovered together. Atari was kind of um, clamped down. Everyone knows the story about finally they released Day Ray Atari, which opened it up to you know people to discover how to program and stuff. But it was a matter of a community learning to discover these tricks together, and and we, we learned mm -hmm. and 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 passed it on, and everyone did back then. Every every program was an example of how to do something new. Yeah. Now, I actually, one thing I don't know if you guys have looked at our original write-up for Cookie's Climber, Cookie Climber. When we submitted it, the article was almost like a little reference guide about the uh, the tricks we did and how to do scrolling. And there were wow. like there was like a nice. table of video modes and. Um, display list instructions and things like that that we submitted and our thought was we were going to educate people i i think it's kind of a shame that that never that one never got published with all those uh, yeah you know and not that, of information. not that they would have even put those in anyway <laughs> right i, I wish they would have but yeah <laughs> they they usually had editors all those magazines had like um technical thing of the month and they may have wanted just to leave it to those guys to, mm. to describe the technical issues but but yeah we we yeah. really had a good write-up on most of these games and by the way i've put together uh well eric we we all kind of put together this lengthy description of how we wrote the original basic games and then also how we wrote the original uh, these assembly updates and i put posted yeah. that to atari age about three or four years ago and and um everyone loved yeah. loved seeing that we've also got a write-up of these assemblies um assembly language games and how we did these and the order we did them in and all the tricks and and the uh, the notes that we have you know the the graphic characters on the graph paper so that i'm going to release that as soon as we release all 14 of these 
by December. I'll release oh, all that's the, great. the developer notes and, and all the back story as well. Yeah, because the one you released in 2017 with the information about your basic games and the, and the, the photos of the magazines was a yeah. really great overview of of the games that you made in the 80s yeah so i would i would encourage people to go and search that out on atari age and download that yeah, yeah when i and, we and how have you found this game you're playing now was an example of parallax scrolling that we were really happy yes. with you know developing in basic we did that in basic yeah. 20 year olds wow but but in basic it was <laughs> rough scrolling it wasn't fine scrolling like this but, yeah, character by character. But, but I'm literally, like yeah. one of the good things about doing these basic updates, and somebody asked a question. I, um, I saw it was like, did you purposely update them or keep them exactly the same? And that was kind of uh, we wanted to have the flavor of the old games, but update them to something a little bit more fun to play. So this game was really slow. That that missile that's dropping down came down very slowly in the basic version, but you could scroll about eight screens wide, left or right, and you had to have that thing dropping that slowly in order to get to oh. it. So I narrowed up the play field and made the thing drop faster. So it's a way faster paced game than it was. But the, the way we, um, those mountains, the placement of the mountains was a really tricky algorithm and like it was fun looking back at the basic figuring out how we did that and i recreated that exactly in assembly ah. it was we, we we placed a left edge of a mountain range and then five random characters with with um up and down jaggies and then a right yeah. um bracket on that range so you can see how they're in like groups of five or three and so so everything's randomized uh, okay. though those are randomly generated it's not like you know, it, I literally spent an hour looking through that basic code with all these data statements trying to find where the graphics were. And I realized there are no <laughs> graphics. It's generated on the fly. <laughs> and so, yeah. And, and speaking of that, maybe you can step us through how you did translate the basic programs into assembly language and the, uh, the considerations that you took into changing some things but not changing others. Right. And, and 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 maybe the tools that you used as well. Yeah, let, let me start start with that one. Um, one of the reasons why we first started to decide to to do these ports of our basic games to assembly language was because I was talking to Robert and I said, um, you know, our games were at least half of the games were the graphics themselves, and that just translates automatically. It's data statements turned into bytes of memory. So the actual program logic isn't that complicated. We can do this in assembly language. So we decided to tackle it. And so we were able to reuse a lot of the, the redefined characters, the graphics, all that. But for the most part, the actual game logic, we just recreated that. We knew how the game played and okay. we just rewrote that completely without trying to do a line by line conversion from basic to assembly language. The only time I did that was for the maze generation algorithm for Robot Dungeon because that was so complicated and the code was so obfuscated in the original basic that I had to like almost do a line by line translation from basic to assembly language to make sure that that um, maze generation software or algorithm worked correctly. So that's the only time I did that. Robert said he did a, a basic translation for the mountain range, but that's probably about it. Yeah. The rest of it, we just knew how the game played and, and redid it. But that's not to say, you know, we may not have done a line by line translation, but we had to ex really investigate that basic code yeah. to see the, what the game logic was. Now, once we understood the logic in our heads, then we wrote it, you know, freehand in assembly. But, but understanding the, the logic about, you know, when, you know, how many points things are worth, for example, and what when, yeah. when you finish the game and that piracy that that graphic zero version of piracy 1981 was the most complicated rules i've ever seen in my life <laughs> and and trying to figure those rules out in that basic program i finally got it down and then was able to program it but i i spent a, a long time just trying to figure out what those rules were in that game and it's very complicated it's very when you know the rules, it's a real good game, but you know it's not likely that a lot of people are going to spend a lot of time learning the rules like they would in the olden days when you would 
type in one of these game of the months and that'd be the only game you'd play for a month and you you know, <laughs> you'd yep. now now you've got 10,000 games to choose from you play a game for 20 seconds and say okay <laughs> i get the gist of it i'm moving on next so yeah. right next. yeah so, so, our, so yeah our development environment um when we first started to do this um I started investigating development environments. I, I thought surely we wouldn't be developing these on an actual Atari computer with a, um, you know, Atari assembler cartridge. Um, the reason we didn't do it in the first place 30 years ago is we couldn't afford that cartridge. And so, <laughs> so um, I looked into it and I found this tool called this development environment called WUDSN, which is just this amazing cross compiler development environment that you develop in a, a really nice um, integrated development environment on a PC and it generates um, assembly code that is then automatically run through um, the Altera emulator. So the, the, oh, the development right. cycle is so fast now. You make a mistake and it doesn't crash your computer. It just you know <laughs> crashes the, the development environment or it set, sets a, a, a flag. Now, this is a funny thing too. I, I, in the games I developed, I ended up using the debugger extensively in Altera and relied on it. Right. And Robert never did. I never used he, it. he never used the debugger <laughs> whatsoever. And of course, you can't just like print out variable values like you would in basic. Uh, you know, sometimes we'd put little numbers at the yeah. bottom that would represent where our where positions were. Right, at. I did that. Yeah, and I put little yeah. little print statements to see what's going on. But but um, yeah, I never used the debugger. Eric, yeah, did, so, now, did you guys use any? Uh, did you guys use any like assembly subroutines in your basic games to speed things up? Oh, I, I think um, there was there were that yeah, Eric yeah, added. Yeah, for um, s sometimes for like um, scrolling or something. Uh, yeah. yeah, in the basic versions, we you know that was the A equals USR fifteen thirty six comma mm -hmm. this or that, and we <laughs> we had a couple of those things that we got from magazines, and and Eric actually right. wrote his own for the fine scrolling on um, Piracy two, which turned into Piracy yeah. sixteen twenty one. Eric wrote his own. He hand assembled it. We didn't I hand have, assembled it back in the day. This is thirty five years ago. I mean, he wrote it down. Yeah. Wrote what the op codes are. You know. And and we typed those in as data statements, and it actually worked. You know, so yeah, wow. we did a little bit of that, but not in all of the games. And yeah, so this, I feel this like game, there might have been fine scrolling even in this game. Yeah, this it was. was um, this, this is a game that was never purchased or published, but I I in the original game had a fine scrolling ship at the top, and um, there was a fine scrolling shark and fine scrolling piranhas, but they were terrible. They were. Um, the piranhas were just a bunch of hash marks. They were one player, one quadruple wide player. <laughs> it was just a bunch of hash marks, and this shark was a quadruple wide, eight pixel wide shark that looked terrible too. So that's one thing I wanted to improve. But other than that, it, at a glance, this game looks so similar to the basic version and plays pretty similarly too. Yeah. Um, other than the shark and the piranhas looking well, a lot better. The music adds so much to oh, the all music the games so I much. found. Yeah. yeah, the music's great. Yeah. Um, oh, what was the question I was going to have? Um, well, we, we played this yesterday, the, this game, and we cranked it up to the, the highest level possible. And I tried and I tried and I tried to get past the shark with the with the object and i just could not you, no you might not have been moving diagonally to. you can do it i did i did move <laughs> diagonally and i moved like the pixel after the last pixel <laughs> i could with the shark and i just could hard. not make you know, it but have yeah. you guys been able to i can do it? do it yeah i wrote this uh, <laughs> i wrote this one so okay. i practiced a lot yes you can do it now one thing okay. these guys always do is play with the keyboard though which right. is, yeah. you know, oh. uh, That's true. It makes I don't know. It, that might make a difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you definitely sure in some, some cases. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Well, it is. It's it's technically feasible. I'll put it that way. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> um, Arena Foot asks, how long did it take to write a game back then? I guess on average. Well, this game. Well, let, we can start with this game. I had a dream. This again was thirty-five years ago. I had a dream overnight. And, and thought this whole game up, well, not a dream, you know, actively, you know, kind of half awake, half asleep. <laughs> Overnight, thought this game up when in the morning I woke up and kind of sketched it all out. And by the end of the day, 
I had a working version of this game in basic. Yeah, but that wow, was okay, I so would very quick. That I wouldn't say that was typical of all no, these games. No, it's we did Ramsey's Revenge in one day though too. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Wow, yeah, that's true. But, yeah. but games like Cookie's Quest, the one that you were um, going through the hallways, that game took a long time, like yeah, a month, month right. or two, more than a month or two. Yeah, and, and that one had some starts and stops. We we halfway figured out how to do the hallway, and then we some some roadblock got in the way, and we put that aside for a long time. Oh, we did. So that game took months to do. Um, most games took probably go. weeks to a month. <laughs> yeah, Tanya oh. did it. All right. Oh, the highest yeah. level. Yeah, oh, no. yeah, did it. No. Oh. You have to. <laughs> that's but okay. She, she didn't make it to top, but no. that's good enough <laughs> to get past, past the, the sharks. Shark. Yeah, you made it past the sharks. Yeah. But, but yeah, most games took from like two weeks to a month. Yeah. With the three of us yeah. all working them. Yeah, that would be typical, but but some games were even faster than that. And like I said, Cookie's Quest was probably the longest one that took a you know starts and stops and took took months you know a couple months from the time we started to the time we finished it. Um, so it's a lot different now than it was back then, where you would put your game in a magazine and then you'd get no feedback <laughs> right. other than it being published. Right. Uh, maybe your friend would see it in the magazine. Well, we just got some How feedback from 35 years ago. Thank you for that uh, feedback. You remember the, the game over for it. Here you go. <laughs> there Five, you go. Got our first just, feedback. Just got our first feedback. <laughs> Long ping, and here it is. Long ping time. Speaking of overflow, yeah. there it is. Um, but, but now that you, you're publishing it in uh, Atari Age uh, forums and, and possibly other ones and, and putting it out on the internet, how has the feedback been uh, now? And how is it like interacting with people? Oh, that's awesome. Showing them your, your games. It, it's so much better that way. I, you, know, the, the, you know, it's exciting to get the feedback on Atari Age. And then all of these games have been shown on YouTube through various um, retro game channels. And, and we yeah. just... You know, it makes us feel really good. And even um, the moral John Hancock showed two of our games in the Halloween episode. That I mean, that's amazing to see that, that kind of feedback. And then, um, you, you know, really, that, that makes it all worthwhile. We really did these games. Honestly, we wanted Eric and, and, and I and John wanted to do these games in assembly for a long time, I think. And just for us. Literally, we didn't even think about the community or anything but it's turned out to be really great yeah. to do it with the community yeah actually yeah, and it's i was going to say the homebrew thing and kind of an awareness of what you do on atari age and kind of keeping track of all this homebrew that's being yes. released I, it's just awesome yeah. i mean i i yeah. still play these games in emulation and you know as seeing new games that are just terrific um Oh, it's amazing, yeah. the games that are coming out. Yeah. Now. Yes, it certainly is. But, but yeah, the feedback's been great. Um, so, sometimes you cringe a little bit when people criticize, <laughs> but there, that's few and far between yeah. because people know it's, it's, hey, we're giving this away. You know, you, you know we'll, we'll take the feedback and we'll make improvements. Some of the games um, we released and people gave ideas and we implemented them. You know, so yeah. it, oh, and we, we took their ideas and and actually you know listen and and we're you know I, I like to be active and and respond back one of the fun things was on atari age there's the high score competition each month and a couple of our games have yes. been on the high score competition those are oh, really great. fun because you get many people looking at them and then people say hey this game was pretty cool you know and <laughs> yeah. so so that, yeah because some some games on the surface you look at them you go okay yeah. yeah but then when you get into them and you get to the higher levels and you actually uh experience the game to its fullest you go okay that was actually a lot of fun and you see right. what the author's real intent was with the game and not just like the first level yeah you, you... this is this game that Tanya's playing right now. Overflow is my favorite, just to pick up and play a quick game. It's, it's addictive. It, it's um, yeah. It, you know, you're eventually going to lose. It's fast. It's fast. Very yes. arcadey. Yeah. Very arcadey. Yeah. It, There's no winning this game. It just gets <laughs> yeah. more and more frantic. So, so every 500 <laughs> points, it speeds up if you haven't noticed. So it gets, okay. it gets faster okay. and faster. A very familiar looking uh, plumber. What What there. do you mean by that? 
<laughs> uh, it just, it just something you know just looks familiar. No, he was a carpenter. It, but... yeah. He was, people think Mario is a plumber. He was a carpenter. This is not the same guy. This is Luigi. He, he, he changes jobs. Yeah. yeah, he's got a he's got a lot of green to him. Yeah, on, on this. well, you so, know, yeah, I think he is Luigi. So the thing about that is when you stack two players to get three colors on the Atari oh. 8-bit. The, the third, like, overlapping color is, like, not up to your control. You can only define, like, two of them, and the overlap is kind of random. So, you, you know, when I finally got this combination, I said, that's close enough. <laughs> it, it looks pretty good. Um, so, Nostalgic says, I'm guessing that with the special characters like those in ATA, AT ASCII, that the magazines had to have special equipment to print those, not just straight from the program listings to the page. You know, I think the Atari 825 printer back then could print those ad ASCII characters. I, th I think it okay. I think it could. That's, that's a good question. They probably had some sort of yeah. print shop type, um, you know, advanced yeah. publishing software. But but to me, I, I think I, the, from what I remember that those old Atari printers could print those characters. Yeah, because I was I was into the Commodore 64 side of things, and they had you know special yeah. uh, Petsky characters right. on it. So and and always the program listings looked very different than the rest of the magazine. Like they were printed on something differently. Yeah, different. So well, so I think you might be right where they would print it on a, a different printer and then yeah. you know uh, make a collage for the I, for the. Magazine. I am looking closely at the printout though, and it does not look like it's dot matrix. To me, oh, so okay. I don't know. Maybe they, you know, they had obviously something. So that's a good. I'm I'm sure for the magazine they did do that, but I don't think you had to back in the day do that. See, there's an example of the ad asking you like reverse video, but I don't see yeah. I don't see dot matrix in there. You don't see the little little yeah. dots. It's very smooth printing. Yeah. yeah. So I. Don't it was know. a it was sure a different era, and, and I you know I pulled out. I did some digging in my basement and I found some of the original submissions, which were hand typed on a typewriter. <laughs> yeah. And I just uh, wanted, I don't know if I can show it, but this is actually a program listing that was typed on a typewriter. A little bit closer. Yeah. So this was the, the listing oh, for yeah. overflow when we submitted it. And, and I don't know if that was a requirement, but we actually have it typed in on a typewriter. That is weird. Because we would also send in a, we would send a cassette, I, and then we got. I think, I, yeah, we would get back. Oh, a cassette. Okay. Yeah, we would get messages back that said your cassette did not load. Send another one. We got. I bet that's phone. why we did this because and, we and, didn't want to have that happen. We thought they could at, type it in. But as if the editor is going to type that in. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, no. It's like if the cassette doesn't load, you're you're not going to get any money. I was surprised to see it. <laughs> so this, so this, case, this is the other piracy, this is the, right? The piracy, it was Piracy 2, and now it's Piracy 1621. But this game looked almost like this in basic. But the, the, like the, 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 it actually had fine scrolling in basic. This, this section was a little different in basic. But, you know. Right, because this is moving very fine. Right. Yeah. These, and um, that's that. Um, the the bombs that were uh, cannonballs that are being shot in the previous screen were also rough moving in the basic version and now they're smooth but this this we handled a little differently than the basic version right um i don't think there's there's no diagonal movement it's just there was down left and the, right. J no, james there was that's a good there. question when, when it was diagonal i i like kind of ran into things too many times so i i i put uh. that out purposely it was too like yeah. free flowing, and I decided just to make it up, down, left, and right. You need better control. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, you notice that in some games, if you if you accidentally press to the diagonal, right. it's like you're dead. Yep. Yeah, so you change it to four yes. which is which is smart. Right. But but this imagine a basic game in 1985 that had a smooth scrolling screen that looked just like that. And three different screens and three, three <laughs> different levels. Yeah, but, was, but yeah. But we, I don't even know if we submitted this one, but it wasn't ever published or, or, or anything. But um, anyway, this, this, this game um, was one of the last ones we did too um, when we did these 14 games. And, and you 
program them from what year to what year? Um, like 85 to 88. No, we published some, we programmed some in high school. So oh, that's true. So 83, 83, yeah. So that's, 82 or 83. Okay. And the last 82. one that we did was 88, which was um, Sakoba. That's true. It was 82 okay. to 88. But the, the primary, we were really active from like 83 to 85. Yeah, 83 to 85 okay. was our like time when we were really like programming every day uh, when we weren't playing our our um, g games that we had. You know, we, we we played games on that Atari as much as we wrote games. Believe me, we 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 love we love playing games on that thing. Yeah. Plus, we went to the arcade yeah. every single day. Yeah. That. Yeah. <laughs> Good for more ideas. Right. Yeah. yeah. A lot of these games are somewhat based on real arcade games like space assailants was space invaders yeah, i don't think tanya's played that and um the um That'll be next. alien yeah. assault oh. alien assault was roughly based on missile command especially the right the, the backgrounds that changed and phoenix was based on phoenix at least one of the screens of phoenix yeah um kooky Climber was based on Crazy Climber. Crazy Climber. So we, we, di yeah. we did obviously base some of the games on, on video games. And, and of course, Sokoban and Yatsi. Yeah, right, right, right. Pre-existing yeah. pre games. Yeah. 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 Now th this, I think Tanya described this last night when we were playing this as like a bullet hell space. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's, a, that's, a, that's exactly it. Because there's so many bullets on right. the screen. It's, yeah. it's more about avoiding the bullets than shooting the That's right. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. But John most, mostly wrote the basic version of this one. Why don't you talk about the two mo screen modes that were flipped on this one? Yeah, this, was, this game was sort of um, written, I guess, around a technique you know, was to use two display lists that were sort of spliced together so that every other frame, we would show the stars and then the in, the actual invaders. So you could overlay those mm. invaders with these stars that were scrolling. And it was just an, another effective way to do something in basic that, you know, otherwise would be too slow. And the, the thing was that, you know, it was suddenly it was not just 30 FPS, but it was every other frame 30 FPS. So it sort of flickered. Right. And and we I, I remember we we kind of downplayed it in the write up. We sort of said, yeah, but it, it it's, you know, considering the gameplay, it's it's pretty good or something. And of course, they rejected it. They said, yeah, A, we have a million Space Invaders clones. And B, you know, it flickers like crazy. We can't stand that. <laughs> oh, so. no. So this, yeah, yeah. so this assembly version, all of those stars are one player. And it's, it's using the trick of reusing a, a player, um, you know, on okay. each display list line. So, so all of those stars yeah. you see is one single player. So they're all staggered. None of them are on the same right, line. Correct. That's how you get away with it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. One thing about the original, though, that's always surprised me is that emulators will, it, it, it's really unusual to string those display lists together like that yeah. and to, to iterate back and forth. You know, so the end of one display list jumps to another display list and then it jumps back yeah. to the first one. And, and like Altera will do that. And, and, yeah. and other emulators. I think Atari 800 emulator yeah, does do. it they as work. well. Yeah, and I've just yeah. been impressed with these emulators that they go to that level of accuracy and handle a very unusual... Because I think we had to do something weird with like the non-maskable interrupt register in order to even make that work, if I remember yeah. right. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so you, you disable everything. I had written a, a display list interrupt, or actually a vertical blank interrupt for that one to smooth scroll the, the ship at the bottom. And it wasn't working, and then I realized it was because we disabled the whole interrupt the system, interrupts. and there was no <laughs> vertical blank. <blade. laughs> but anyway, so it's it's really a tribute to these uh, uh, guys developing these emulators that they're that accurate. Well, as opinion. an example oh, of that, yeah, they're very. We we did all this development in an emulator, and here it is working on the actual hardware. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And they're so accurate. Those pe people are making the emulators super passionate about it, and they get a lot of feedback because people use them to develop games on. So, and and, and some people uh, that have that we've uh, showed games on on the show for 
other systems like 7800 or 2600 they don't even have a console right and they're completely developing yeah. it on the emulators right. yeah. so we wrote those words that you see on the screen there 5000 years ago the oh. pharaoh ramses was swallowed we wrote those words you know 35 years ago and we use the same exact <laughs> same exact wording although i found one typo that i fixed up but <laughs> But okay. this game, this a thirty-five-year-old typo. Yeah, yep. <laughs> seriously. Yeah, we didn't have autocorrect back then. It was like you, no. what you type is what you get. So, um, so this this game, I I love this game. It's our only two-player game. And oh, okay. Yes. You're gonna yeah. It's actually a race game, right? It's Start a race it. game. Oh, yeah. yeah. Restart it. And you you race to the top of the Let's pyramid right now. and avoid stuff, and you get you gather. Um, oops. What, rings, what happened? Is it? Yeah. yeah, rings to get new lives. Oh, we had to reset it. She put it to, I she put it to, to one, one player. player. Okay, so the rings, yeah, we'll get five rings, give you a new life, an extra life. And um, yeah, so, so this game we released in October is our Halloween release. Ah, uh, yes, yes. So who's That's... player two? So I'm player two. Okay. Tanya's player one. Yeah, there's hiding spots. They're already beating me. <laughs> ah, oops. You turned around too quick. <laughs> so originally this game, this was the very first assembly language game I wrote starting in back in March. And this game, okay. I was making changes to this game until a week ago, probably. So th this game <laughs> oh, wow. has been a long time developing. Originally, I, I wrote it exactly like the basic version where there were no player missiles. So those, those monsters going back and forth were just characters that were roughly jumping eight bits at a time. And oh, okay, yeah. So I guess James is done. Yeah, unfortunately. So, um, <laughs> I'm not paying attention too much. So anyway, <laughs> I originally wrote it like that, and it was like, okay, I recreated the basic version, but it's not, like, very good. So then I, I, <laughs> I decided to change those. There were only four lines of um, monsters, too, not... Right now there's, like, six or eight or something. And yeah, so more monsters, so higher pyramid. Right. Yeah. No, not higher pyramid, just more monsters in different hallways. Yeah, actually, the oh, pyramid okay. is exactly the same yeah, pyramid. Exactly. Yeah. Including the moon. <laughs> the, no, the moon wasn't there. The, the moon was originally at the very top. And, yeah, we and had John, a moon. And John uh, said, hey, can you make that moon rise like every level? And I said, okay, whatever. And, and that was a lot of work. Nice. That's that my marketing. That's my marketing it. input again. Yeah. And, well, John's that's, idea, that's right. John also came up with the idea to add more monsters. And I initially did it the easy way and made them all like go back and forth together at the same time because it was just one player and, and you know, the bitmap was just a big, long bitmap. And then I, finally I decided to do it the right way. And yeah, but look at it. It's so much better like it's this. so much better. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Nostalgic asks, is this another example of bit shifting to move the characters yeah. I'm, I'm guess referring to the basic version of the game well you get, uh, no the basic version just jump jumped a whole thing at a time i think he's talking about your the, your character one and two you know player one and player two. Oh. yes so but they move two pixels at a time not one but they are they are okay. up and down and left and right they are bit shifting two pixels at a time and then and uh cafe cafe man uh, asks, what Antic graphics mode do you guys prefer to use? Antic 4, four or Antic E? 4. Oh. 4. Okay. Four, 4, yes. Antic 4. Yeah. For almost all of our games, some of our games used Antic 5. E, e is graphics 7 and a half, right? The, is that? Yeah. So we never used any of the, the actual graphics modes. On all 14 of these games, every single one was a, a character mode. But four and five are our favorites. This was zero, of course. But but original. So the original basic ones, Kooky Climber. Yeah. Now that someone's asking some technical questions, Kooky Climber was actually get graphics three, block graphics, the lowest resolution actual graphics mode, and um, and we converted that over to Antic. I think it's Antic five. Yeah. And, and um, the other game that had um, Space Assailants, the one we just played, the Space Invaders, the falling bombs yeah. were actually like Graphics 4 or something. It was like Graphics that. 4. It's the black and white low resolution mode. But, but, the, yeah. but the, the, the invaders that you were shooting or the assailants were Graphics of four, Antic 4, yeah. which is the, um, the four color um, 
mode, which is which is still which it still is, and the characters yeah. there are exactly what they were yeah. originally. The bitmaps of those space assailants were exactly like, and this is exactly the same. Those those sphinxes are exactly the same that we drew out 35 years ago. Every <laughs> yeah, and and actually, as so those you, guys so say, the the, yeah. this was that stuff was all done as a marathon session, I think, right? Yeah, one day. this was a marathon. Yeah. This was a one day marathon session, <laughs> the, the basic version. Yes. So the framework's the same, but like the player missile graphics and the monsters, um, that's new with the display list interrupts that <laughs> Robert yeah. put in there. Right. So yeah, and this was one of the few that we did. We actually went into the RMT music editor and wrote our own um, walk like an. Yeah. Impression. So that's why it's only yeah, one yeah. voice. It's not as good. I'm not very good at that tool. So. <laughs> so, so this one's an interesting one because it was the last, ver last basic game we ever wrote, and right. it's the first yeah. assembly language game I ever wrote. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> it was fresh on my mind. Yeah, I'd written well, it only 20 years in 1988. So when did you guys learn Assembler? Was it, I guess it started a little bit back in the yeah. 80s when oh, right. we were doing these programs. Right. Um, but when did it develop more? March. Just March. Right <laughs> March. March. Yeah, <laughs> I, no, I do not no, know Atari no Assembly kidding. myself. There's no kidding about that. We, um. we really um, went into that. We, we well, understood it fairly. We were okay. all computer science majors and we had yeah. assembly language in That's college. True. I mean, we'll say but that. Not, but not, oh, okay. not 6502, though. But. Yeah, I knew enough to do the like fine scrolling routine for that piracy 1621. I, I, I did, I hand assembled all the code to do that and some display list interrupt stuff from, from the basic times. But, um, but we, I had never, the, we had never written anything more than 25 lines until right. March. Seriously, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's 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 amazing. Then, if you you did all these programs, yeah, redid them all, right? And but, um, and like yeah. uh, you know, some of that hard stuff, like the fifty two hundred conversion and all that stuff, was you, you know right. also you know behind the scenes too. So yeah, we we did a lot in, in a small amount of time. I I will admit that. <laughs> so someone had asked yeah. the technical question earlier about. Um, switching from characters to sprites and that's what i do for moving these hay bales or whatever crates or whatever they are i call them hay bales right but those those are characters when they're static but when they're moving they're sprites yeah and somebody just uh, um nostalgic 26 is asking all these great questions so character mode was so powerful he's stating and you could draw a lot fairly fast and could get speed and movement if you don't didn't mind it being jumpy but we mm. we did not do jumpy character modes in any of these games. We use character modes for all of these games, but none of them jump. It, two pixels is the most they jump. Be, and, and you can barely notice that. We, we purposely did um, all the tricks we could to use either player missiles for the moving characters or do um, bit shifting to move the, the jumpy characters. And we, none of these games jump. So if, if you look closely on this one, the character Oops. is literally preppy. I went and um, went to the Atari emulator and was playing and I was playing preppy and capturing every single frame of what he looked like, including oh, okay. if you look very closely, you can see his pocket protector, um, the little pixel yeah. in the middle. Oh, yes. the little dot. And yeah. so when this was posted on Atari age, someone said, is that preppy? And I said, yes, it is. So with fro it's with wow. frogger music. I knew I needed an eight bit wide character from kind of a top down view. And I, I li literally right. the first thought came to my mind was like, I think preppy was like that. So and it, it turned out <laughs> it exactly was. And of course, this one uses the Frogger um, soundtrack, which was one of my favorite soundtracks too. the um, John Harris did an awesome job on that game. So um, we found yes. we found the Frogger music and I thought that'd be perfect for this game. Oh, it's perfect. Yeah, it encapsulates the the the, the nostalgia of, of hopping around and, and you're moving around and in, in uh, uh, tile to tile in this game, just like Frogger. So that's perfect. So this is a game that in, when I first started my working career at lunchtime, there were four of us that would play th this game on the IBM PC at lunchtime. And back in 1988, I thought, well, I can probably do this one on Atari 
computer by storing the um, screens on a floppy drive. And so each screen was loaded in individually. So I did that actually when I had started my working career in 1988. Um, but for this version, I've got all the screens um, stored in memory. Oh, wow. Um, Mark Space Inc., who's watching. What? Hi, Mark. <laughs> um, uh, said, that, that that is hilarious. Did you know that the preppy source had been posted and used the data from that? Nope. Wish we had. I wish I did. Nope. I didn't know it was. <laughs> I, I literally paused the emulator frame by frame to... Um, to copy it down. Of course, there's not too many. Um, not too many frames. Too, not yeah. too many versions of him or frames. But no, I. I, and, I and Berserk was hand. similar. Didn't you um, copy the animation of Berserk the same way? Yeah, for the, for the robot dungeon, the original character didn't look so nice. But I wanted to make the controls exactly like Berserk, which they are. And then I said, well, I might as well make the character just like Berserk. So I did the same thing. I did a Google search and found some Berserk sprites. And luckily, that was also defined. I knew it was less than eight pixels wide. So it would work fine for an Atari sprite. Yeah. The original. OK, we're going to move to. OK, go ahead. Oh, we're going to move to the, the last game of your 14, yep. which is Yahtzee, mm -hmm. which we actually had a ton of fun last night playing. Yeah. You <laughs> saved the best for last. Yeah. Yeah. You saved yeah. the best for last. I'm glad. This is a exactly. world premiere. I, I... World premiere of Yahtzee. Nice. Roll the drum, drum roll. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This, this and, is and one. I love yeah, this the is face a second the guy makes when you get a Yahtzee. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he actually wins. Yeah. Well, he did in the basic version, too, and that's something I had to find in the code and kind of force the, uh -huh. I went back to the original basic code and kind of put in code to force it to get a Yahtzee. So I, I, I remembered that I made him <laughs> wink, but I didn't know exactly how I did it. So um, yeah, he smiles and winks. Yeah. It's, it's, it's very satisfying because it's not easy. It's not, it's not e easy to get Yahtzee. It takes a lot of skill <laughs> and, yeah. and a little bit of <laughs> luck. I learned a heck right. of a lot of the rules of Yahtzee. I realized that when I originally programmed this, I had the um, bonus Yahtzees done incorrectly there's there's all kinds of rules that have to do they, they call some the yes. joker or whatever <laughs> they, i spent half my time programming what to do with the bonus yahtzees because the rules are so complicated of what to do but i i, I know better how to play yahtzee now <laughs> yeah we 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 relearned a bunch of yahtzee rules last night playing it yeah. it, it is a lot of fun oh you should take and, the full house you consider Oh, you already oh, did. You already did. I already have it. I already have it. You already did the boss. She already got it. Four of a kind. All right. <laughs> so, so you've released, or you're going to have been. Re oh, actually, that's a good question. When are you scheduled to release the three unreleased games? That there's actually tonight? four. This, yeah, because Yahtzee oh. is the fourth. So, so there's Phoenix, oh, okay. Yahtzee, Space, or um, oh. Robot Dungeon and Kooky Climber. So we're going to do Kooky Thanks. Climber and, and Robot Dungeon this week. Most people that yeah. entered those, those were entered into the EBIC 2021 contest, which was just um, That's right. announced this weekend. So we can finally release those. And then the last- Congratulations on getting uh, in seventh and- Eighth. Seventh and eighth. <laughs> well, we're, we're in the top 10. Place. We're in the top 10 top out of 10. 10. <laughs> so we're, we're happy with that. No, we, we're- um, Hoping for better, but happy to um, participate. There was some tough competition. There was some yeah, really was tough there. competition. I yeah, say that. some good games so, there. Yeah. So then we're going to release those this week, and then we're going to probably release, um, well, we will release Yahtzee and Phoenix in early December or something, and then we'll be done. Right. And then Before the end of the year. Yeah, <laughs> yeah before the end of the year. And then uh, we'll release those um, developer notes and the... Um, you know the game right. writing descriptions along with those last two so we're, we're getting there we've been and um you were talking earlier about compiling possibly compiling them all together and putting them on maybe cartridge yeah yeah that's or, an exciting thing yeah. so we we um we've been talking to al from atari age about doing that and, and doing it as a compilation and he's he's actually burned the first 5200 512k mega card Wow. We just burned it yes or last week, so it's a proven it works. And just yep. today he, he um, burned the eight bit cart and there's some issues with that one. We the bank switching mechanism on that is a little different. So we're working through that, but 
I'm sure in 2022 we're going to have the compilation discs on Atari Age um, releases for both 5200, 14 games in one, and the 8 bit part, 14 games in one. Wow. And there are going to be 512. Make a pack of games. Yeah, requiring 32K for your 8 bit computer, and of course the 5200 will just run on that. So, one other thing too is that we're going to hopefully release it in a box along with we'll have an instruction manual and then also an sd card and the sd card will have versions of the basic the basic versions along with those um write-ups and the designer notes that we have for both the basic version from you know 30 years ago and the newer version so so and then all the nice. digital copies on that as well so hopefully we'll have that little sd card um you know kind of a bonus inbox um, goodie Oh yeah, that that'd be a nice nice packaging yeah. then to have and all, I also, all the archives. I also all put, put together, together yeah, yeah, a soundtrack of all the in in game music. So we've got a, a fourteen game oh, soundtrack wow. for um for this as well. So that's kind of fun oh, to play excellent. with. Excellent. Converted all those to MP threes. Oh, that's that's really fun then. Yeah. That's gonna be a nice uh, nice thing that people can get. Yeah. Well so the nicest thing that. is that that's always been the the, the motivating factor probably for us to develop these games is so that we could have like the collection and be able to play it. Playing these games on basic, yeah. even in the emulators or some of the handheld systems that John and Robert have, it's a real pain to load things that are, require basic. And so one, right. one side benefit of doing them all in assembly language is now we can play them on our emulators, handheld systems. I've got an actual arcade machine that plays you know, an emulator that, that I can play these games on an arcade machine, which is really a neat thing. That's that's great. So, um, and speaking of emulation, some of these or uh, most of these are now available on MarkSpace Inc.'s Argon yes. uh, emulator for, you know, tablets and phones and, yep. and your computer as yeah. well so are the are the newer ones just on there or are some of the older ones yeah, as well? 10 of the 14 so the the unreleased ones are not on there yet but two of them yep. will be um released this week that that um brian and mark space can add to aragon and then the other two will be shortly after that so all 14 will be in there and right now again going back to our earlier discussion his aragon emulator was one of the things that pushed us to quickly get 5,200 versions of these. And he's got a, the, the Argon emulator works great with this, um, with these games. And, and you know, there's not a lot of homebrew 5,200 games that Argon can, you know, you know, publish with the emulator. You know, you, you're allowed to put your own right. ROMs on there and everything else, but it comes with right. a lot of um, homebrew games. And, and there, you know, besides ours, there's not that many. so. So you're helping fill it out. Yeah, we're helping fill, fill the, it out. The list. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's it's a win-win for the community. So and, and Mark Space Inc. says uh, we'll be showing these games at Free Play Florida this weekend. So that anybody that's in the Florida area can come and play these games at their booth. Wow, well, you're there. We're gonna talk to Brian about that. Brian, give us <laughs> give us. Oh, I'm not gonna be here. I'm heading I'm heading on vacation this week. I'll be here. Dang. Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. You can you can go hang out at his booth. Then, we we uh, did that a couple years ago, and that's a great. Yeah, event. two years ago we went there. Yep. <laughs> great. Uh, Nostalgic says Tanya's getting so many full houses <laughs> to, to take her to a casino. Yeah, I was doing pretty well the last round until yeah. <laughs> the end. Yeah. Um, and uh, Nostalgic says thanks in advance for including notes and technical details in your upcoming uh, cartridge release version. Yeah, yeah and we're, we're all on Atari age, so feel free to ask us any questions. I mean, we're, we're more than happy to, to chat about any technical. And I've, and I've got your handles right below under your pictures there. So anybody yeah. wants to uh, message you or, or check out what you've posted on Atari age, you can just search for their handles right under their pictures. And uh, yeah, so thank you so much for coming on Zero Page. It <laughs> thank was you. a pleasure I it was, talking with you. I thought it was Z and, and, and talking about and, and old, playing old, all the games. Playing all the he games, did all the course. talking, and all, I did all the games. Tanya, you did yeah. awesome. Huh? Yeah, Tanya. <laughs> oh, thank you. That's all the work. <laughs> you did like better than I am on most of these games. <laughs> yeah, it was. It's it gets amazing. a lot of practice. It was really. It's fun. amazing when he's 
he's not chirping at me while I'm playing. <laughs> I play pretty well, right. but normally when we're playing, he's he's making little comments as yeah, I go. Yeah, that's so. true. So yeah, I don't get to play unobstructed most of the time. And the, the cats didn't <laughs> jump in your lap when you were trying to play either. Nope. One of them was biting her hair. I saw that. I saw that. I think he's missing. He's missing uh, his treats. He wants to get yeah. some treats. Yeah, because yeah, usually when we do the show, we 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 feed them treats, and it's triggered by the audience. Right. But uh, not tonight. Nobody's no done one, that. No one. No one wants they, to interrupt you. Ah, yeah, there we go. All right, a treat. <laughs> there it is. So, Somebody triggered it. There we go. Feed the it. poor thing. <laughs> RC70 triggered it. Thank you, RC70. He's been waiting this whole show, I betcha. Yeah. Yeah. Right down here. Right down there. Can you see? Is the cat cam on? Yes, yeah, there cat we go. cam's on. There Excellent. <laughs> so now you get to see the cat's cat vet. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's it's been a pleasure talking about the old school magazines and typing in those games yeah. because I used to do that and it was a lot of fun. So, you know, reminiscing about that and talking with some people who actually got their games published in there. Right. That's awesome. Well, it was fun to talk to you guys, too. Thank you yeah. very much. Yeah, it was great. Thanks. Well, thank you. <laughs> so uh, have a good night and everybody can uh, check out their games on mm -hmm. the Atari Age forums and download the 10 that are available and two more soon and two more before the end of the year. Yeah. So thank you so much for uh, hanging out with us, Eric, Robert and John. And we will see you in the Atari Age Forum. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. All right, thank you. Have a good night. Right, good yeah, night. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye. 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 <laughs> Bye. Oh, kitties. Oh, cat. He picked his up and ran cat. away with it. Oh, He giddy. didn't want Pixel to, to eat his, his Very treats. Very naughty. I just threw a treat in your in your slipper over there. Oh. Get it <laughs> out of it. You're going to have to give it to... Hi, baby. Here. There we go. There it is. Oh. Thank you, RC70. Thank you for feeding the kitties. <laughs> Atari's been waiting the whole time. Well, thank you for holding off on the feeding the cats because it wouldn't work very well. No. There's actually because we have <laughs> multiple <chose. laughs> cameras going and there wouldn't be enough room for the feeding yeah. of the cats. Oh, the... my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Atari is so hungry. Well, thank you, Dan. I'm glad you enjoyed the interview. It was a lot of fun. It was All... a lot of fun. It's always fun speaking with developers. Yes. Um, hopefully there wasn't any crackles this time. We didn't hear it in here, but I remember, yeah, a lot of wires, as you can see, because we have to have wires going from the laptop out <laughs> for the video and the power for it. Uh, was the was the audio clear on the interview? It was not crackly, because we just I just installed a new card. You just so figured out what worked. was causing problems the last time, so. Yeah, it seemed good from what I saw. I missed a bit. Yeah, you would hear it. It would be like, yeah. it was terrible. Yeah, before. great audio. Yeah. Yay. Okay. Last one. Last one. Um, yeah, because I installed a proper card, uh, an extra USB hub into my computer. So yeah. Hopefully, it. I'll I'll check it out later. But I think I've fixed it mm. so that you know coming up, we can. Uh, the D train. You missed the whole thing. <laughs> oh, missed the whole thing. That's okay. Mm -hmm. It's saved. It's saved. Um. So, yeah, so we played a whole bunch of games, yes, 14 games tonight, so many. Um, so we're going to go on break for two weeks um, so I can catch up on paperwork and also prepare for a massive, massive interview on December 3rd. Let me just put that up on the screen. Uh, let's see. There we go. So you can see here, this is what we just did played these games and uh, talked with Eric, Robert, and John. Mm -hmm. And then we're going on break for a little bit so I can catch up. Also prepare for the Atari Homebrew Awards mm -hmm. a little bit more because I have some paperwork to do with those. The awards are delivered. They're not here, but they're delivered. They're, they're still on the other side of the border. <laughs> yeah, which cost me $200 to cross the border, sadly. Um, can I take this out? Yeah. Yeah. Thank All you. Done with that. Um, but after the break, we're going to have the world premiere of Attack of the Pes Petsky Robots. Nice. Not Pesky. You said that. Pesky Robots. Did I say Pesky? At one point, it was funny. I didn't. Or maybe it was Darcy. I must have been Darcy. I don't <laughs> think I've said that. Pesky term. Robots. Petsky. Uh, yeah. Petsky. Um, because it was originally developed on Commodore machines, and that's what they have. Mm. Um, 
Um, but it's going to be made on the 7800. And we ran through a whole bunch of when uh, of different platforms that it's been released on so far. And it's going to be on the 7800 now. And it's MK Smith, Matt Smith, is that is going to be converting it. Oh, so we have the world excellent. premiere of that. And oh, also we have the double exclusive secret world premiere of two more of his games. Mm. They'll blow your mind. <laughs> Guaranteed. Yep. Guaranteed. Mm -hmm. One of them blows my mind already. <laughs> uh, you didn't send them here. No, because the border opened up. Usually for the past, I think, two years, at least one year, I sent them to Arena Foot because the border was closed last oh. year at least. Okay. And then he sent them to me. But this year I was like, oh, the border's opening up. Yay, I'll just go down and get them because yeah. it saves time. It saves it's money easier. for yeah. shipping. Because I had to double ship it to Arena And we foot. can go shopping if we cross go the border. Shopping. But <laughs> you have to get, you have to you get a... You still have to get have the to nose swab. A, you have to get the nose swab and a piece of paper that says you're cool. Yeah. And But it costs money. So I'm hoping... Yeah, I'm the, gonna, the PCR test. I'm going to wait uh, a little bit. And see if they drop it, if enough people complain, or if it's like, oh, we don't need to do that. Mm. Um, nice otherwise, I'm just going to go across border by myself, probably, rather than us It would both be nice to, to, to take a trip down, yep, like, for the day, Trader but Joe's. if we're not going to be paying $300 for that, so it would probably just be you or we'll whatever. We'll see, yeah. we'll see. Yeah, two weeks without ZPH. I hope you'd get to relax and enjoy some games without pressure of putting mm -hmm. on a show. Yeah, mm -hmm. we'll play some games. We might even do a, a After Dark show. <laughs> impromptu just for we fun we can shove a few in there it just won't be as as yeah as prepared right the yeah. abbuc contest just finished and okay. i didn't have a slot to play those games that won oh i see oh and there's one that i really want to play on the show so it's, we could just do an after dark uh, if you can fit one in bomb jack but an 8-bit version okay it's really fun okay. yeah so we might do an after dark of that yeah yeah um then, yeah, we have an After Dark of Ricky and Vicky I've scheduled. Oh. Mm. But that's after we get back. Mm. Maybe we'll play it before because it's a long game. Mm -hmm. But you can't save it, can you? I can't remember if you can save um, it. Or if there's codes. There was a code or Maybe something. Code. I can't remember. I, I do remember we would... Yeah. I think there's... Cheater... Yeah, I think there maybe, were codes. Maybe, maybe, I think you save your level and then you can type it in or something. Right. We'll so have to look that up. But Playing that on the something. 7th, possibly... And yeah. then on the 10th, we're going to release Zero Page Homebrew, the game, mm. uh, and give away five copies of it on cartridge. So stay tuned for that. Mm. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to do the giveaway um, or the questions or just come up with questions or something. Mm. One will be like random. One will be a question. One the cats will choose. <laughs> I don't know. They'll choose a treat. We'll put five... <laughs> five treats out but we'll atari put... atari will eat them before you know which one he's picked he'll be like oh. uh it's not the first <laughs> giveaway we've ever done we no. did giveaways on atari age day when we had the marathon did we not did we do, oh, do a giveaway on the marathon we might have done something on the marathon yeah. like the um oh, stella yeah stella marathon oh yeah. there's a marathon coming up next year yeah. It's very big. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And yes, we're yes. going to play every single 2600 game. Yes. Original, Ooh. classic ones. Yes. Uh, or most of them, and not the garbage ones. And you all must ones. join us and play along at home. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> On a regular ZPH show. Um, yeah, I think it is the first giveaway because yes. we've never had things to give away. Mm. Um, then we're going to be do playing the Triple Zark Stars trilogy. Mm -hmm. Um Number one has been released on cartridge recently. Number three we played a long time ago with yeah. Darcy. So number two will be the exclusive world premiere mm -hmm. that we're going to be playing on the show. And we have a non-live interview with Leandro Camara. Okay. It'll be... Uh, we're sending him questions and yeah. then he's sending... Oh, okay, cool. Language barrier. Oh, that's yeah. fair enough. <laughs> yeah. So fair there'll enough. be well thought out answers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the Holiday Homebrew Special on December 24th. So mm -hmm. a lot of big things coming up. And now that I've fixed the audio issue with interviews, mm -hmm. I want to do a lot more of them because they're a lot of fun. Arena Foot. 471 Atari? N they'll be pared down <laughs> from 471. Yeah. <laughs> We're just going to do the major, um, like, major studios. Okay. Like Atari, Activision, like a lot. There's, There's a lot. There's yeah. a lot. We're going to skip... 
a lot of the crap ones. There's a lot of like off-brand weirdnesses. Yeah. I forgot to get back to Zarkstar email or reply that I got last week. I hope they didn't sell out. I think they're really close. They're down to their last handful. Mm -hmm. I think like five. So if you wanted, you better you better go for it. Uh oh, yeah, some news. Uh Stella just dropped their version six point something today. I posted a bunch of news in uh Zero Page Homebrew Facebook page let's see that's not come on come on there it is stella 6.6 .6 update uh they added support for plus rom carts for plus rom games mm. so you can get your high scores using stella now mm -hmm. sent to the to plus plus rom high score chart um and also support for movie cart oh that's so cool binaries yeah so now you can load movie cart binaries on stella and play the videos through stella wow um, wow <laughs> which is pretty pretty cool that is really cool something added web links for many games i'm not sure what that means i'll have to investigate it mm. i'm guessing when you load the game there's a built-in link to go find out more information i don't know if it's just for old school games or mm. if it's also for homebrew and where does it go does it go to atari age or like i don't know hmm. yes so i want to revisit movie cart so movie okay. cart support is on stella yes which means we can all convert our movies anything into into movie cart format atari format and play them through stella not okay. a, not, not not a machine cart? no not, not the... none of those yet oh, okay now they're they're working, working on, on something so you can put an sd cart card in a okay. cartridge and then I you believe. could you could then play it on your i just yeah that would be super cool but uh he is working on that well that would blow my mind yeah we are our next our next retro video game day i'm just setting up computers all around the room <laughs> uh or ataris around the room well we do have one we have one so we can play that but like you could convert all the wonderful 80s films oh, into, yes. and then just have them playing yeah, like you could but we could play it through Stella. I feel like you could make a whole art installation about it. <laughs> you that could. So cool. But they've improved it like vastly since the one we played, the Star Wars. Oh yeah, yeah Like yeah. it's night and day. It's so good. That's so cool. Check out it's the thread so cool. for their updates and the videos that now are looking really good. Oh. Uh, so cool. <laughs> what else? Tron movie cart. Yeah. Yes. That would be yeah. good. Yeah. Uh oh! Added a check for update button to the help dialog. So now it'll check for updates. You don't have to download them. John Hughes Film Festival on yes. Atari Kart. Yes, all the yeah. good 80s stuff. Mm. All the great 80s action movies. John Hughes. Some of them are a bit... Dated? A bit dated, oh, let's yes. say. Yeah. That's one way to put it. I watched, <laughs> what was it? Um, a bit rapey. <laughs> yes. Some of them. It was like Sweet, sweet 16 in <laughs> the movie candles. theater. 16 Candles, yes. Uh, it was like 10... Cloak and Dagger, that'd be a good one. 10 years ago now... <laughs> And hey. I was watching it with some friends who are my age. Misbehaving. And uh, the audience of younger people, like, We're like audibly inhaled mm. at one point because it was so bad. And we, we just kind of went, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, that wasn't good. <laughs> that was 10 years ago. So, yeah. yeah, it's funny. It's funny revisiting these films. They still have their charm, though. Like, But, yeah, oh, some things don't date well. No. Hellway is going to be released in the next batch of games from Atari Age. He's yeah. looking for a December, like a about December release, mm. early December, late November, probably for all these games. It looks like, if everything goes well, so that um, you can order them for uh, the holidays. Kidding, the eighties, who knew? King of Kong on movie cart. <laughs> there you King go. King of Kong. Oh, that is funny. And also Altira got if... updated yesterday as well to 4.0 a major update and that's the 5200 and atari 8-bit mm -hmm. uh emulator mm -hmm. it's very very good cool uh you have yes. to adapt your movie to a perfect 14 oh, sure. on atari cart sure <laughs> movie cart yeah i'll yeah, do there that there you go hi kitty hi yeah, this guy is crazy right now why are you, why are you so... so crazy oh and and in other news yes you this guy yesterday 
turned six. Atari? Oh, it was Atari's it's his, birthday. It was his sixth ber- birthday yesterday. He got lots of yeah. treats and lots of hugs. Yes. Yes. And he got lots of treats today as well. So happy birthday, Atari. Happy birthday, Atari. Yeah. Yes. Uh, no, they're not interesting. <laughs> Atari producing old games on Cardigan. They're not homebrew. Oh. For one. Um, I'll talk about them. <laughs> you have opinions. You so, can share your opinions. So Atari <laughs> announced today <Okay>, nostalgic. <laughs> that they are releasing three games okay. on cartridge, which is, you know, fairly notable that they're actually putting out cart games on cartridge. Mm-hmm. And they are, as they put it, three unreleased games, which they're not unreleased. It's very weird. The 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 website that they have mm-hmm. is like really weird, and the wording is like there's errors in what they're saying. So does it not seem like it's a real thing? People were like doubting it at first, but then really? the official Atari account pay, account whatever. emailed and also t- tweeted about it. Oh. So it is real, but they're being sold by somebody who's not Atari. So they, it's not on their web page. So they like license their yeah. name. Oh, that they well, that's all that. they do. That's all that's they, all do, they now. do. They just owe the name. Right? Well, they yeah. they made a system now, so yeah, that's something. Um, yeah. One of them you can buy in the Atari Age store and have been able to for a long time. Um, Weird. One of them they said was made by Howard Scott Warshaw. Yeah. Which it was not. Really. It was made by an Atari Age member in two thousand five. Wow. And they said, oh, it's an unreleased game from 1983. It's like, no, it's not. Really? It was made in 2005 or something um, by Debro um, um, uh, in the Atari Age forums. He goes by Debro. Um, so they've got a lot of misinformation and errors. That's and and also recently they... they yeah. s- I don't know who's managing Atari right now, but they yeah. also re- recently announced it's the 50th anniversary of Atari. Happy 50th. It's not their 50th. Next year is their 50th. 1972. They were, and then they followed it up with, oh, this is a pre birthday for next year. It's like, mm, I don't believe you. <laughs> I think you're covering your ass. It's so funny. Yeah, it's just like, they, they're all, they're not very organized. I found. Whoever's doing this. Whoever's... Because it's not Atari. Atari, they just license a name. Well, it... It seems that's all they do. It is Atari now. Is so it? I mostly ignore them. It's, okay. it's interesting to watch what they're doing. Okay. Because they're just screwing up everything left and right. Um, see, this is news. <laughs> it is news, but yeah. it, it, it isn't at the same time. So, yes. But also, it, Yars Return, which is one of the games that they said Howard Scott Warshaw made, which he didn't. It, he did plan to make that, but that's yeah. Debro's game. Weird. But on their website, they call it uh, Yars Return. But in the video they posted on their website, it's just Yars Revenge, like the old one. Oh. I have no idea what's going on. Are they just re-releasing Yars Revenge? Or they're just... It hasn't been they... created yet, and so they're just showing the first one. They could be. Because they could be just showing the footage of, like, with one being in development kind of thing. And for the box art of one of the three games, mm. they're using the box art from an Atari Age release. And the copy mm. from an Atari Age release. Like, word for word, in the manual, from something Atari Age released. Huh. And it's like... Uh, the saboteur game i think which is a howard scott warshaw um game it's just i have no idea what's going on there (laughs) so they're copying things from some other release that they didn't make it's just it's really weird because it's a mess yeah Yeah. it is a mess some intern writing all that stuff with little oversight Yeah, pretty much it really does look like that yeah or someone got their nephew to like like type it out for them yeah, yeah. anyway I, fake news yeah. it's all fake yeah, news it kind yeah. of is weird it's fake it's news. just a bunch of weirdness yeah and i have no idea what to make up make of it mm. like are they actually releasing yars return mm-hmm. is it something different than the yars return that debro made is howard scott warshaw involved in it i have no idea so i don't know what to say about yeah. that yeah. we'll find out i guess uh but it's kind of cool that they're putting them on actual 2600 cartridges you can put in your system Mm. but they're not homebrew 
they're old games. So that's mm -hmm. why I didn't even... I mean, there was no news in this show because we did an interview. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, now you're talking about everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, you want to jump to the interview. That's yeah. totally understandable. Um, But it's anyway... Late. What is it? 8 o'clock. Oh, it's, it's like fine. Eight. We could play another hour of, of Yahtzee at this point. And I thought the Atari branded hotel and the VCS were going to be the weirdest Atari news. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. There's what about Atari the Atari Crypto? Uh, yeah. And Where I think, is it? And and they were planning an Atari um, casino, but that fell through. But they are going to go ahead with the hotel, and I can't remember where it is. It's in a weird location. Is it in Japan? Is no, it... I think it's in the U.S., but it's oh, like in really? a place like it's not las vegas i can't remember where it is oh and the prices oh the prices of those cartridges oh no fifty dollars for a cart just okay. the cartridge and a manual okay which is what you pay for a full box version vegas almost. and phoenix oh it is, is in vegas is. oh those are normal normal places yeah. i thought it was somewhere weird like really like, isolated why? i mean phoenix is unusual but not nah. that unusual people go for Fe to it's phoenix it's a big it's a big city we've been to phoenix before. yeah for uh conventions and stuff yeah and same with las vegas yeah. those are both very convention heavy bloody hot yeah and don't a, go to phoenix in august <laughs> and 150 dollars for complete in box with poster and pin yeah which is but later states all come in the box yeah it's a mess i have no idea yeah 150 dollars complete in box is <gasps> A huge nostalgic cash grab. It's out of control prices. Mm. A pin, those cost nothing. Depends how big the pin is and how elaborate it is, but really almost nothing. Anyway, yeah, buy them if you want. Mm. <laughs> Atari Crypto holding firm at 11 cents. <laughs> buy now. Hold, hold, hold. Uh, even Circus LE was 140. Atari token bitcoins. Mm. There you go. Atari. Token. Is there a Bitcoin? Called yeah, Atari? you have to pay in Atari token bitcoins. What? That'd be funny. No, oh no! no. Okay, I thought to. you. I thought that was serious. So they get people to yeah. buy in on it. Yeah. That'd be very funny. Yeah. That's one interesting move that they would pull if they did that. Uh, I wonder if Atari is going to release the fourteen to one unreleased Atari fifty two hundred card from thirty five years ago. Mm. Atari may have to bury all that crypto coin in a land, <laughs> crypto coin in a landfill soon. Maybe. I in can't. a crypto landfill? I yeah, in a crypto landfill. A digital graveyard. Oh my god, can you imagine? Bit rot. It and, just and bit rots away. Bit rot and uh, <laughs> what are those um, digital, what do, you, what do you call them? Art and things. Oh, god. oh uh, NFTs. NFTs. All the NFTs that people don't want go into the crypto landfill. That is somehow worthless now because nobody wants yeah. a picture of a monkey. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> It's going to happen. That stuff's There's right. going to be a crypto landfill somewhere. Ah, uh, uh, yes. NFTs for art is so weird. Art at least makes S more sense. Especially randomly made monkeys or randomly made creatures. It's all just hoping that the next person will buy it from you for more money. I mean, for, for those things. It's going to work for the next 10 years and then it's get yeah. the market's going to be swamped and no one's going to give a crap. So it NFTs of the cats. Yes. Everybody's making <laughs> NFTs because they hear about some 11 year old that made a million dollars selling garbage NFTs. Yeah. Of, you know, whatever they made. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 the beanie baby of the 2020s. So, you know, yeah. what are you going to do? It would be great if they announced that they're finishing the Sword Quest contest. That would be worthy news. Yes, that would be. <laughs> <laughs> they've they've released the third and f or the fourth game, and they're giving away the third prize and the fourth prize. Yeah, yeah that would be good. Mm -hmm. um, okay, we're done. Uh, we'll probably come back with a um, After Dark at some point. Just I pop think on. so. Just in the next two weeks, while you're yeah, just so I don't have to sorted. plan shows. For it takes a, a lot of work. Yeah. Beanie babies are awesome. They, yes, but they're not they had, worth. They had practical applications. They were soft and cute. Kids like them. Yeah. Yeah. But to bet, your, to bet your life savings on them? No. No more <laughs> beanie babies. It's a bad idea. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in, everybody, to the interview and watching us play some fun games. Mm -hmm. Did you like them? What's your favorite? Mm. I like Yahtzee. I liked Yahtzee too. <laughs> But of the non um, non puzzle games. No, uh, let me think. Uh, okay, I so liked, we didn't talk about it too much. I like Night Rescue a lot. Night Rescue was with brilliant. the balloon, and you rescue really, those people. Really, really, really good. Yep. Um, let me think. 
We have the list here. That's why we're looking. I know. This way. I know. You're like, why are you looking at? I think at you had a lot of fun space. with Overflow, right? Overflow is frantic and it's a great game. Yeah. I think it's probably one of the best games you get sucked into. Robot Dungeon was pretty cool because it's, um, like yeah. Berserk. And I, and I think I, Night Rescue is my favorite. I yeah. I um. I actually Phoenix, which they talked about, is very simplistic. It does get harder because we yeah. played it a little bit yesterday. Well, we didn't get very far, and it does actually get a lot harder. Oh, does More it? comes down. Oh, but okay. But I didn't get a chance to say it when we were chatting, but I love the Phoenix sprites and their colors and how they mm. move down the screen yep. and the color gradation changes. So visually, I think those birds? sprites, birds, yep. whatever you want to call them, the birds. Look, look beautiful. Yeah. So I actually really liked how those looked. Yeah, they did look nice. Um, Overflow, probably. Yeah, Overflow. Yeah, yeah. it's frantic. It's very, very uh, arcade-like. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, there's still in the chat. Yeah. Night Rescue was it's, always it's, one of our favorites. It's also really nice. It's because it's yeah. got a lot to do. You yes. have to rescue people. You have to avoid things. There's yeah. a huge map. And, and it, it scrolls. It becomes challenging very quickly, with yeah. especially once you start getting the faster-moving oh, airplanes. Oh, the planes coming through, too. And yeah. then as you shift, I think there's more uh, helicopters at the top, too. So, yeah. No, yep. really, really, really good. Yeah. So, I mm -hmm. want to thank uh, Robert, Eric, and John. Yes, yes. For coming on the show. Yeah, really, really And good. it was a great talk. Yeah. And great playing through their games. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want to thank all the other people who tuned in and watched yeah. it. Dan ABC, Nostalgic26, Vitoko, our Anschwitz, yeah. <laughs> is in the chat there. Uh, uh, RC70, Mike Soul, The D Train, Phaser Cat Games, uh, who always constantly pops up. He's playing games on Twitch. It's like, Phaser Cat Games is playing blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I follow him on Twitch. Oh, well, uh, I who else? Who else? Rendered Ghost. Uh, Mark Space Inc. Who uh, actually suggested this interview. Oh, thank you. I was like, you. that is a great yeah. idea. Thank you, Mark. Um, and you should have an email from me today as well, awesome. if you haven't checked. Uh, GH Forever. Great uh, roles. You got great, yeah. great roles, he said. <laughs> Sometimes. Uh, <laughs> oh, my goodness. Gussiology, Goosey, Gussiology, Gussiology. Thanks for chatting today. Yeah. First yep. time People chatter. Jumping in. Charles like Whelan, yeah. uh, CMS Prague. And who else? Oh, who also was the first chatter? Yeah. First time chatter as well. That's awesome. Thanks. Oh, Atari 800. Crossbow, I see. XL Rules, Rod Kassler, yep. and Crossbow. Yeah. And everyone All else. All the other people. Who's lurking? Oh, thank you, D Train. Yay, D -train. Oh, I had my desktop audio muted. Oh, no. For some reason. Oh. Um, thank you for resubscribing. Re 23 months. I see Atari XP trying to recoup the money they invested in the injection mold for the Atari <gasps> cart shells, hence the high costs. Mm -hmm. Possibly. And they're limiting them to 183 copies really? of the game. Because they're like, oh, they originally came out in 1983, or they're scheduled to come out in 1983. Mm -hmm. um, that will be an enormous number to sell. Because Al posted in the forums that his best-selling cartridge is the synth cart for the 2600. And he said... It almost has sold 1,500 copies. Really? Or has sold. What's the synth cart? Uh, it's a synthesizer programming so oh, you can make music on oh, the 2600. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, that makes a lot of 1, sense. 1,983. Did I say that? Did I say something else? I can't remember. <laughs> I don't know. 19, 1,983 copies, yeah. Yeah. D-Train, I've been watching you knuckleheads for over two years. <laughs> two years? <laughs> Thank you. We've been cross broadcasting yeah. for over two years. Yeah. Um, almost four. Yeah. Next year. No, is it three? How many? Three? Uh, 2018, so yep. 19, 20, 21, 22. 22. Four years. Four years. It's wow. It's flown by. Yeah, it has flown by. Yep. Ke ke keeping our sanity through COVID. Yes, and it has. Hopefully been. yours too. <laughs> yeah. Filled and, in some, uh, filled in some, some gaps. time. Yeah. Yeah. I've been watching you since you started. Dan was a very early watcher of the show That's and i awesome. believe arena foot as well yeah well yeah very arena beginning foot. i yeah. think i always think of arena foot and zero page together <laughs> like i just feel like arena foot's always always, always been in our chat so yeah. thank you arena foot yes for thank you so much supporting us so much 
beginning. Yeah, I watch for a year before subscribing. Mm. Yeah, yep. <laughs> Arena Foot. Some people just sit, OG sit in Foot. silence. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's time to go on break. Enough chatting. So we'll be back <laughs> officially in two weeks with two a weeks. massive, massive interview. You yeah. don't want to miss it. Like, literally, make sure you don't miss it. Because uh, one of the games makes me very excited. <laughs> Hopefully he's, he's going to do an update to it. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I played an early version of it. Um, they're not secret for me, the world premieres. They'll be secret for you. Um, so, we're out of here. Say bye to the cats. Yeah. Go get Atari. Get oh, say goodbye, you sleepy post-birthday cat. Oh, he's full of birthday cat cake. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh, oh don't falling fall. over. Oh. Full of cat cake. Full of cat cake. At least cat treats. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Say bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Have a good uh, two weeks, and we'll see you very, very soon. So make sure you follow it for any games, for any shows that we might do in the meantime. Yes. So bye-bye. Bye. Say bye. Bye. Meow.